and welcome Averett friends to Daily Field and Frank R. Campbell Stadium where we have your Averett University Cougars going up against Randolph-Macon Yellow Jackets. My name is Eddie Glenn and I am joined here by Zach Humphrey. Zach, how do you feel about this matchup this evening? Feeling great, Eddie. Uh, th uh, thanks so much for having me here with you and uh, first home game of the season. Can't have better weather. Both uh, these teams ready to go and it's going to be a an exciting one, that's for sure. First of five home games, and how about it, the first home game ever where it will be the number one ranked team in the USAC versus the number one ranked team in the ODAC, and Randolph-Macon came in preseason ranked number 24 in the nation. They fell out of that ranking after losing to number six, Johns, Johns Hopkins. Yeah, and uh, you know what, uh, Averitt, a top team in their conference, at least preseason-wise, too. So both these teams have a lot to look forward to uh, this season and a lot to live up to in terms of expectations. So uh, really excited about this one and uh, two good football teams going head-to-head. -head. Yes, sir. Well, we've got about 17 minutes until kickoff. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with a little bit more in-depth analysis, and we'll set the stage a little bit more for this game between your Cougars and the Randolph-Macon Yellow Jackets. you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. I think um, me being involved with SAC, along with uh, my involvement with the men's soccer team, has made my experience at Averitt amazing. Um, at first, I didn't really want to get involved around campus, but since jumping in the deep end, I feel like I've had a brilliant experience. And uh, me being able to help Averitt, whilst Averitt's help helping me, is probably the best experience. Eddie Glenn, and you're watching the Averitt Sports Network. And going back to school is not just for kids. Averitt has affordable online degree programs designed for working adults who want to pursue an associate's, bachelor's, or master's degree. Just visit gps.averitt.edu for more information. And, Zach, let's look at the Big Sky Rinsing Events players to watch for this evening. I've got number six, 
Jacob Wright, Averitt's senior quarterback, dual threat quarterback who chooses to stand in the pocket and he will throw it all over the field, but he can use his wheels to score some touchdowns. Who do you have? Yeah, he's a he's a good one to have, Eddie. All conference first team quarterback last season. But I'm going Connor Showalter on the defensive side of the ball, the senior. Uh, Showalter, a senior from North Carolina, uh, really had a strong game last uh, week with seven tackles. So looking to see more of that uh, on the defensive side. Absolutely. And, you know, enough can't be said about on the other side of the ball for the opposing team, Trey Frederick. I yeah. mean, three time thousand yard rusher. He's, you know, got a bunch of records over in the ODAC. He sits. Um, third in the ODAC career rushing attempts, third in the ODAC career rushing yards, and he's not that far from breaking either one of those records. If there's one word to describe this guy, Eddie, stud. Absolute stud. And three years running now over 1,000 yards. In fact, over 1,200 yards the last three seasons, and he's well on his way uh, to breaking the ODAC career rushing record as well. He's 162 yards away, so that's something to keep our eye on. Hopefully, for Averitt's sake, that that doesn't come into the fold, but uh, this guy is super, super talented. And Averitt has a stud running back as well. Senior transfer running back Josh Tapscott was actually named USA South Special Teams Player of the Week. He ended up taking a kickoff return, 99 yards to the house in the first half last week when the Cougars won a, a, their, op their season opener. And Josh, Josh Tapscott, I mean, uh, played back up last year, really just started to get his feet back under and playing mm -hmm. football, took two years off, played at Wyoming. And this year, I mean, he looks like a different running back. Well, yeah, and you could just see, I mean, when you look at him, too, he's a stout guy. He's well put together, and he's a, you know, ground and pound type of running back. Coming from Wyoming, who, you know, they had a pretty crowded backfield, it, it sounds like, when he was there, but still played, you know, quite a bit at a big-time university. So uh, he's a special talent, one to watch for, for sure. And this is a big game for Averitt. If you're an Averitt fan, an Averitt player, this is a big game for Averitt. Averitt is 0-8 all-time against Randolph-Macon, including 0-4 mark at home. However, Averitt has played the Yellow Jackets within 10 points or less three times. And last year, just last year, was one of those times, a 24-14 loss where we missed two field goals in the opening first half. But the Cougars, I mean, the players, have, they've been talking to me in class. They've got, they feel like they've got the right concepts. Mm -hmm. They've got the right plays in place, and it's all about the execution now. Yeah, you know, Eddie, you've been around this program for, what, four years now, myself just coming in. But I can sense that this program is turning a corner. I mean, they, they just keep talking about last year, 8-2 and two season, and – the expectations are high now, which is a different type of feeling when you have expectations. But uh, this team looks like they're really ready to go, and I'm excited. Uh, two, two, big, uh, two big running backs, two big um, offensive lines. We haven't even got there yet. But, Absolutely. Uh, you need some offensive linemen to run the football as well as both these teams do. And one of the things that you said, you know, we're about to turn a corner, mm -hmm. and that comes from consistency despite the coaching changes, Zach. Mm -hmm. Although Avery's football program has had several coaching changes in the offseason, the Cougars were able to maintain consistency by filling those roles from within. Assistant head coach Patrick Henry, who was the longest tenured full-time coach on staff, was named offensive coordinator. David Clark, who was the special teams coordinator from the past two seasons, moved over to defensive coordinator. Dustin Beck, who finished up this time as a GA coach last year, took over as the special team coordinator. And then Adams also added an experienced assistant in Scott McConnell to round out his full-time full staff. And when you've got consistent coaching, you're going to have consistent discipline and consistent ex execution. Exactly. And it's nice to, you know, if you're a player then, to see familiar faces, right? Faces that you've seen in practice before. And, and let's be honest. I mean, we talk about big-time football. What are the best teams? You know, you look at New England Patriots, right? You look at the Steelers. But they've got – a model of consistency, right? The same owner, same GM, same quarterback down the line. And so I think you make a really good point there that Averett uh, hiring within, keeping people on staff to keep this train rolling in the right direction uh, from an 8-2 and two season uh, a season ago. And, you know, why stop here? Let's keep it rolling. Absolutely. And if we're going to talk about coaching, we absolutely have to mention Randolph Macon's coach. Pedro Aruza is in his 16th season as a head coach over at Randolph Macon. He's got a 58% 50, win, win percentage, overall record of 90 and 65, and is second in Randolph Macon's career list with those 90 victories. Yeah, this is a really good program. I mean, Randolph Macon, they have big expectations, as we talked about at the top, but, you know, they lost last week 17 to 12 at Johns Hopkins, and I know you mentioned that, but that's the number six team in the country. I mean, so you're losing 17 to, to 12. You got to take that with a grain of salt, though, because who was the opponent, right? Right. Um, and Johns Hopkins, obviously, uh, a worthy one at you know number six in the country. So, um, 
And I'm a, fired up. I'm excited about this. Two good teams. And a lot of people would say there's no such things as good losses and bad losses. Right. But if you, you come in as the number 24 ranked team in the nation, you go up against the number six ranked team in the nation, which is nothing to laugh about or nothing to just gloss over. Right. And you lose by within 10 points. You know, you got your really young at receiver. And you're a run-heavy team. Right. You know, so that's something to hang your hat on. Run-heavy teams don't exist anymore. Yeah, and I know there's no moral victories, especially in that locker room, right? I mean, a coach is not going to say that this is a victory. But us as broadcasters, we can talk about it a little differently, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and we're not players. And, and I think it is a bit of a moral victory. I mean, when you when you play a team uh, number six in the country within five points. And uh, it sounds like they had a pretty good chance to win that game, too. A couple of things didn't go their way late. But uh, um, they're looking to bounce back. And Averett's looking to, you know, Keep it going here and go 2-0. and Absolutely. And just looking at a couple of things here, Burke Estes, he had a he struggled in the game. He went 11 for 24, four interceptions, 94 yards, but he was able to get off 10 rushing attempts for 52 yards. That's right behind Trey Frederick, who touched the ball 16 times for 62 yards, right about four yards a carry there. Uh, Frederick didn't find the end zone, which is probably – one of the reasons that they weren't successful, mm-hmm. when you have a, a workhorse running back like that, he needs to find the end zone to really get your offense going. He, yeah, he certainly does. And, you know, when you talk about this team, they want to run the football. Randolph-Macon, they want to ground and pound and, and attack you uh, rushing the football. And multiple uh, people can do it. You mentioned the quarterback, Frederick, of course. Uh, but they even got a few other guys that will uh, see, see some action as well. Absolutely. And we mentioned being young at wide receiver. We had DeAndre DeAndre Gill, excuse me. He got two receptions for 43 yards, and Trey Owens touched the ball four times for 27 yards. But their defense is really their mainstay. Their defense is tough. Their defense is nasty, and their defense is going to hit you right in the mouth. Brian Sullivan, nine total tax by, tackles by himself. Anthony Williams, eight tackles. Matthew Vergara, seven tackles. Calvin Whitehead, seven tackles. And then I was looking earlier, and Randolph Macon. Their DBs are really getting into the run game as well. Mm-hmm. Victor Robinson, four, to- four, t- four solo tackles, one assisted. He had a tackle for a loss, and he forced a fumble. I mean, really active back there is a, really a, a nickel safety is what he plays. Um, and when you have safeties that can come up and help in the run game, I mean, that's really going to help the back end of your defense. 100%. This defense is really, really strong. I mean, you mentioned a few of those guys. Whitehead, good linebacker, just moved to linebacker this year uh, and has really filled a void there. But Steve McNair, with a name like that, you've got to be a quality <laughs> player, right? Steve McNair, right. he's their best guy up front, and uh, he's the run stopper that, that every good defense needs in the middle there. And then number 20, Anthony Williams, another guy to watch uh, in the secondary, and he is one of those guys, Eddie, that will come up and help in the run uh, defense as well. Um, but, yeah, they've got a load of talent on that side of the football, and that's really where this team hangs its hat, that and the running back, Frederick. And when you have a running back that good and a defense that good, you can win a lot of football games. Absolutely. And if we want to take a look at the other side, let's look at Averitt's starting starting defensive line here. Joseph Ledbetter, USAC Rookie of the Year. Malik Pulliam stands 6'1", 295. Javon Lofton, 5'10", 285. Romello Urban, 5'9", 245. Averitt has a really big front. A really big front that's not going to move backwards. You're not going to just move them backwards as easy as you want to to get Trey Frederick those open holes. So Frederick is going to have to work to get those holes that he wants. And even when he does get to that second level, I mean, Nick Mintz and Connor Showalter, I know you spoke about Showalter earlier, but, I mean, Showalter is just a, a stud linebacker. Um, he made seven tackles last game. And like you said, a strip sack late in the game last game to uh, get Avery to, a fumble possession uh, that – you know, really helped them win last game. Yeah, show Walter who we mentioned at the top, but you mentioned another guy, Ledbetter. I think he's another one to watch. Uh, now, he had six tackles last week as well to go along with uh, show Walter seven. So I think those two guys are both going to be huge when it comes to stopping this uh, rushing attack from Randolph Macon. Absolutely. And enough isn't said about the Averitt's, Averitt defense's secondary. They led the USA South with 14 interceptions last year. Um, and then their offense also led the USA South with the fewest interceptions in just three. So Jacob Wright really protective over the football while Averitt Secondary really wants to get after the, after the football. And I make that mention because earlier we mentioned Estes had four interceptions last game. The Cougars 14 interceptions last year. So look for them to break mm-hmm. on the ball when Estes is throwing, when they drop back maybe after a play-action pass um, 
downfield trying to open this Cougar defense up. SD's four interceptions last uh, last game, and then very young receivers. Not the most favorable matchup if you're an offensive coordinator for Randolph Macon. Good crowd here too, Eddie, huh? Absolutely. Both and and for both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, you Randolph Macon fans made the travel. They're here in big numbers and Avers fans here for the home opener. They're here in the grass under the scoreboard here on the stadium or in the stands, loud and ready to go. I'll and tell you what, those aromas that were coming to me in the tailgate <laughs> lot, I was smelling ribs, I was smelling steak, <laughs> I was I was smelling all kind of good stuff out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. They throw down, man. The, and I stopped by to get some of the food, and those Avery fans can cook, man. Mm -hmm. Those Avery fans can cook. As we get ready here for the Cougars to run out, they got the smoke building up. They get the notification that it is time to go. The gates are shaking. The tarp comes down. The, the Avery University Cougars go blue, go gold. Flag is up with the cheerleaders. The team is ready to be let out of their cage. Crowd, everybody on their feet awaiting their team on the home field for the first time this year. And here they come, your Avery University Cougars. We're about two and a half minutes away from kickoff. The Avery University marching band out in loud and in abundance. And here we go. They have officially entered the field, Zach. And and I tell you what, Zach, there's not many feelings that can that can match the feeling of right before a minute and a half before a football game, especially, I mean, whether you're in a press box or right. you're a fan or, <laughs> or a player, I mean, you're going to feel some level of oh, excitement yeah. or some kind of buildup inside of you, some butterflies right. in your stomach. Oh, yeah, especially if you've played sports before. I mean, my days are long, long gone, but <laughs> I can still get that urge every once in a while that, yeah, you know, I, I, I used to throw that helmet on too and, and you know, but uh, – Zach, yeah, this I think is a you great still got, You've still got four years of eligibility, <laughs> eligibility left, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but I don't have any knees left. That's the problem. <laughs> That's why I just stick to golf now. <laughs> right? Captains for today's games. Number seven, Joseph Ledbetter, 55. Aaron Pace, 61. Michael Head, and number 10, Kasim Black. And Avery with the uh, nice combination today with the navy on white. Absolutely. Looking sharp. Two of those captain seniors got a sophomore and a junior captain in there, both sides of the football. And it speaks to something to have an offensive lineman, two offensive linemen as captains. Offensive linemen don't n normally get the credit they deserve right. for being leaders on the football field, in the classroom, in the weight room. But here, Avery University showing their big men love. They, they normally wear the – the the BTN hoodies, okay, okay. you know, big, thick, and nasty. <laughs> their offensive like linemen. That. So they show their offensive linemen love around here, and, and for good reason. For good reason. They open up holes for Joshua Tapscott or, in years past, Sean Bowman. Mm -hmm. And so, Heard the name. Uh, yes, sir, they they get the love they deserve. Yeah, you know what? They, uh, they don't always get that credit, but <laughs> – those guys, uh, you know, a lot of times you only hear about them when it's a when it's a holding penalty, right? If right. they're doing something wrong, kickers <laughs> same way, right? right they don't right. get all the glory like a running back or like a receiver in those skill positions. But yeah, very important guys up front making it go. And it looks like the Cougars will receive the ball first. So Avery on offense first. I mean, what better way to start than you know, like you said, let's start off with an opening kickoff return to the end zone. That would be something. Yeah, <laughs> Tap Scott did that last week, took 199 yards for a touchdown late in the first half, and, and it really flipped the script in that ball game because it really wasn't heading in the Cougars' direction there until that 99-yard return. And, I mean, that's something to start the game. You could really set the tone, too, at home, get the crowd involved early. So, yeah, that'd be something. And that's, and that's the thing about football. Even if it's not 
going in your direction, it takes one play. Right. To get the sideline up, to get your crowd up. And That's just right. like that, your energy is up. Yep. So now your play is stepped up to the next level. Right. 100%. And I believe it will be Joshua Tapscott back to receive the kick. There's Tapscott getting the crowd involved early. Yes, sir. And I expect this crowd to be extremely loud right here during this opening kickoff. Tap Scott and Jaleel Webster back there to receive the opening kickoff. Coach Cleve Adams on the field making sure his team is disciplined, ready, and set in order right here in the season opener. You don't want to, you know, you want to start your home opener off with a bang. You don't want to get down too early. You don't want to start making mental mistakes too early just because you're at home and you're comfortable. You still need to be disciplined. And I think with this first drive, you just want to get it rolling a little bit. Get a couple first downs. Feel good about yourself. Even if you punt after two, three first downs, yeah. I think it's still critical That's okay. just to move the football a little bit early on. And especially with a punter like Cole Westbury. Mm -hmm. You can really pin somebody deep and put a, put a team in bad position. Hit one nearly 70 yards last week, which is incredible. Tied the school record. Kick is up and kind of short, but Tapscott will come up to receive it at about the 15. Tapscott finds a hole. Uh -oh. Tapscott just the kicker to beat. Tapscott might just go all the way. Joshua Tapscott at the 20. He's getting called from behind the 10. Five end zone. Joshua Tapscott takes it back for six. Right on cue, Eddie. Right on cue. What a change of pace there, too, in that second level as he blew past defenders on the left sideline. And Joshua Tapscott, I mean, what a way to start the season. Home opener, then a 65-yard kick return for to the end zone. Did we really think that was going to happen? <laughs> I mean, I you, mean, we talked about it, right. but, but it just did. <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you say things like that, hoping it would happen. And, I mean, Joshua Tapscott makes it happen. What a start. Cole Westbury up for the PAT. Up and off of the field goal post so the score will remain 6-0 and that's okay because with a return like that to start the game I mean your your energy is going to stay high 100 percent I mean you, you always want to hit that extra point but wow what a run back I mean when he hit that second level he had a second gear there absolutely on the, down the left sideline it looked like he was going to get caught there for a minute but just charged himself all the way down to the pylon Joshua Tapscott showing he still got some juice and he's going to start it early in this game, man. First quarter, first play. First time he sees the football, he's going to take it to the end zone. Now, let's see what the defense can do, see if they can fly around and get a stop here early and get the ball back in the offense's hands. That's right. Yeah, you want to, I mean, ideally a three and out, right? But first things first, make sure you don't get a big, long return here by Randolph Macon. And the thing with kickoff is stay in your lanes. Mm -hmm. Stay disciplined. Don't get outside of your lane. Don't try and be a hero. Stay disciplined, and the guy will go down. Right, right. Don't be out of position. It was funny, too. Tapscott was the one firing up the crowd beforehand, so you could tell he was already a little amped up. Trying to get the crowd to help him out. And they're in it now, that's for sure. This crowd's making some noise. This ball goes deep into the end zone. And Randolph Macon will start off with the knee. So here we go. The Randolph Macon offense will trot on the field. The Avery Cougars defense will enter the field. And I mean you've gotta you've gotta think that this first play is going to Trey Frederick. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> uh, I mean, and pretty crazy if it doesn't, right? And, I mean And the thing is as broadcasters we know this. So you know that the Avery Cougars defensive coordinators know this, the right. defensive players know this, but Frederick is so good that it almost doesn't matter. He can break big plays just like that. Right. I mean, we're going to see how Averett, you know, tends to play this, but I, Im I imagine there's going to be eight, nine guys in the box to stop the run here early. And there's seven in the box right now. Ball goes to Frederick, and Frederick breaks off about a six-yard run. Yeah, just kind of shimmied, him, shimmied himself. There really wasn't a whole lot of opening there, but found nine yards. Showing off his gut. patience. Mm -hmm. Really stood back there and took his time. Even when he got into the hole, I mean, he still took his time and tried to find another opening and gained about another three or four yards. Randolph making two receivers to the right. Estes with Frederick split off to the right. Two tight ends to the left. 
or one tight end to the left, excuse me. Ball goes to Frederick. Frederick picks up the first down. Yeah, that time they, you know, they, they kind of threw two receivers over there to make it look like there was something else going on, but really turn and give it to Frederick, and good result there for Randolph Macon. And honestly, those receivers might be used just to spread out that Avery defense, mm -hmm. just to create a little more open and bring some defenders away from the box, you know, to take the pressure off of Frederick. And Randolph Macon, they'll, they'll use a lot of tight ends here today, two or three different tight ends. They don't really throw to the tight end a lot, mostly in there for blocking purposes. Trips right here for Randolph Macon. One receiver split out left. Ball goes to Frederick again. Stays patient, bends it back, finds another hole. Five-yard pickup. Yeah, another five-yard gain. A little bit better job that time by a couple linebackers there in the middle. I think Ledbetter came in there uh, late. And for the linebackers, the key to stopping Trey Frederick is you've got to read your guards and you've got to be disciplined. Right. You cannot – if you make a mistake, Trey Frederick's going to capitalize. He's not going to – Trey Frederick's not going to help you make mistakes. Exactly. And you could tell he's got that second gear. So if he gets in, into the secondary, he could turn on the Jets and take one to the house. Kind of an ace formation here, pistol set. Motion over. Ball to Trey Frederick and the Cougars stop him at the line that time. That's a big victory there. Yeah, that was a big time play there up front by that Averitt defense. And now it puts him in a third and three here. See if the Cougars can get off the field. Third and three. Do you think they let Essie throw it here? I don't know. It's tough. I mean, it's it maybe maybe throw it out wide if it's a screen, something like that. Get it into one of your playmakers' hands. And like you said, it's okay to punt here. You don't have to score on the first the first drive. Yeah, they don't throw it downfield too often. I think they might try and get an out route here. Trips right. They motion Trey Frederick right. Estes running around. He's got some space, fakes a throw. Estes still on his feet, and he picks up about 11. Well, that's what Estes does best, and uh, he's, he's a quarterback, of course, but he can get it done with his legs, and you saw right there, looked like he was going to be sacked maybe two, three times until he squirmed out of it and picked up the first down. And I think Javon Lofton was the first one back there to really apply some pressure uh, untouched. But like you said, Estes able to duck, uh, duck under him and then pump fake, get a defender off his feet. Yeah, I thought Lofton had him. He was close. Just couldn't bring him all the way to the turf. And so that sets up a first and ten here for Randolph Macon. Two, two tight ends right. Frederick in the backfield. Ball goes to Frederick. And he, I mean, he ducked his head right behind the guard and picked up about six. Yeah, just slow and steady, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be 20-yard gains. Right. Five-yard carries, four-yard carries, that's all you need. In fact, most coordinators would even tell you that those, you know, those chunk yards, those five, six, seven, it's just wearing down that defense. And then late in the game, that's when you break one. Yep. That's when you break the big hitter. Frederick off the field. And they sub in a different quarterback. This is Andrew Isle. Yeah, he's a sophomore, 6'2", 205. Another guy who can run it. And they go quarterback power, but a flag was thrown, play stops. Yeah, Estes, the senior quarterback. There is uh, Andrew Ely, uh, sophomore, 6'2", 205. When he comes in, chances are they're going to run the football with him. Offsides on the offense, so. And now he's going back out, and Estes will come back in. Estes and Frederick back in the game. Makes it about second and nine. This is a big play here for the Avery defense. If they can get a stop here, put them in third and long, that's something they're not accustomed to in those situations. If they, and like you said, if they can put them in third and long and force Randolph Macon to throw the football, then that would put Avery in a good position. Two tight ends right and receiver to either side. Frederick behind Estes. Play action out route. And this is wide receiver number 22, Trey Owens, who got loose down the sideline and able to pick up a first down. Yeah, able to pick up a first down and then some as he's out of bounds near the 20. And it, I thought there for a second that he was going to take it to the house. Yeah, Deontay Newfell kind of didn't wrap up all the way. or I don't know if... Owens was just slippery, but Owens was able to get away from him. But good way to rally by the Cougars' defense, stick with him. And here comes Randolph Macon. 
Overload right. Everybody to the right. Two tight ends, two receivers, and Frederick. But they hand it to Frederick. Frederick able to cut it upfield and get it down inside the 10. Just, just stays so low to the ground, too, as he found that crease on the right side. And then surges late there for an extra yard or two. And really controlling time of possession, controlling the clock, setting their own pace here. And, I mean, as you can see, Tapscott opened up this crowd, opened up this team with that big touchdown, but everything's died down right. now. Yeah, Run the ball, put it on the Methodically have kind of moved down the field here. Same formation here for Randolph Macon. Ball goes back to Frederick, and nothing going for him there. That was a nice job by Javon Lofton coming off the block there, making the open field play. And we mentioned Javon Lofton, 5'10", 285, and he doesn't move like he's 285. I mean, he's a he's a quick guy. Right, yeah, when you're that big and you can move that fast, that's when it's scary, right? Yeah. It's scary for the opposing team because a guy that big is not supposed to move that fast. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and his hand speed is crazy, too. I mean, he, he gets up and gets down. And just to be 285, like you said, it's just scary. <laughs> There's not many other words for it. Spread formation here for Randolph Macon. Frederick in the backfield. Play action pass, looking to go deep. Estes doesn't see anything, and that's going to be a sack by Joseph Ledbetter. Ball yeah. popped out, but they're going to rule him down. Just hung on to the ball way too long, and Ledbetter just too good, right? Eventually right. he's going to get off that block and make a play, and that's exactly what happened. Secondary stayed disciplined. They tried to go for a, uh, a pump fake and tried to find a man in the end zone towards the corner, but that Cougar secondary able to communicate well and switch off on their man and, you know, stuffed Estes. Great coverage, too. Nobody was open. And good job by the D-line, staying disciplined, not flying around, running around like crazy, man. Staying disciplined, staying in their position, able to find Estes running around. This is a big play here. Third and long. Trips left. Frederick in the backfield. Play action again. Estes goes towards the corner of the end zone. No flag comes out, so that's a good defended play there. It look, looks like Ty Tillman was over there. Good coverage. And that's a job well done, really. I mean, that's a win. I mean, the way they were moving that football down, it looked like for sure they were going to get six. But Averett's defense comes up with a big stop there on third down. And like you said, that's a big stop inside the 10. To really make a goal line stand there is huge. And that's a huge uh, moral victory there for that Averett defense. Colin Brooker back for the field goal. And the kick is no good. Yeah, Brooker, it was two for two last week. He's their backup kicker, but wide left on that one. And I think there's something different, you know, about traveling to hostile environments. Right. You know, that a little bit different kicking on the road. Puts, puts that pressure on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard a couple horns there right before the kick was <laughs> gone as well. So. I think these Averitt fans get together and practice their timing <laughs> with those horns. <laughs> it worked right there, that's for sure. So this Cougar offense will take over at the 20. This is a big chance here. I mean, if you can go down and put more points on the board, now you're really, really setting the tone here in the first quarter. So it's our first look at the Averitt offense. Quarterback Jacob Wright with Tap Scott in the backfield with him. The ball will go to Tap Scott. Tap Scott puts his head down. He's going to pick up about one or two. Yeah, not much doing there, but Tapscott's going to get the ball often, and he should. I mean, he's just a solid running back. Not sure he has the breakaway speed like we'll see from Frederick, but still pretty good wheels. I mean, we saw that on the uh, return. And he's an experienced runner, mm -hmm. and that's what's important. That's why, that's why NFL a teams love experienced running backs because they're patient and they know what to do. Tapscott comes off, Jaleel Webster comes in. Five wide for the Cougars. Jaleel Webster in motion. Play action on RPO. Jacob Wright gets hit in the backfield, and that's a great play there. Yeah, that sure was. Number 39 came up for the linebacker spot. Tavion Anderson. Yeah, Tavion Anderson Sen ripped right through the line there. Senior defensive end, able to buzz his feet, stay disciplined, not bite on the fake. That was mano y mano too. <laughs> And that's a good open field tackle against somebody shifty like Jacob Wright. Jacob Wright makes a lot of people miss in open field. And that's a good tackle by him. And Wright's a big kid, too, six foot 200. Absolutely. Not, not easy to bring down. Third and eight here for the Cougars, five wide again. Jacob Wright steps to the line, sees something he doesn't like, makes some adjustments. Motion again with Jaleel Webster. 
Play action. And Wright goes down. Looks like he tried to tried to escape, but he kind of tripped up on his own two feet. Yeah, he did. And I think he had something if he were able to escape. And so this Cougar special punt team will come onto the field. And they're not scared to punt with Cole Westbury back there at all. As you mentioned, that had a 69-yard punt last week, which tied the school record. So they are not scared to send Westbury on the field. And it actually looks like Randolph Macon is going to try and bring the house here, put the pressure on Westbury. Yeah, it's always a scary scenario here when you're kicking in your own end zone. Senior Anthony Williams back to receive the punt. Westbury just gets it off. And the ball will be placed at about the 48. And we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll come back here in about 30 seconds. 6-0, your Cougars lead it. And we are back at the Averitt Sports Network. Your Cougars lead it 6-0 here against Randolph-Macon College. Trips right for Randolph-Macon as they enter the field after the Cougars go four and out. Ball to Frederick and the Cougars. That's Showalter getting in there. Yeah, big play by Showalter there, and they snuffed that out early on there. And Showalter, another one of those experienced players, he is a senior, 5'10", 205 out of Cameron, North Carolina. He's been on this team for all four years. I actually think Showalter is a fifth-year senior. Yeah. So he knows this playbook in and out. He knows what Coach Cleve Adams loves to do. And he was big last week. He helped him seal the win uh, by recovering a fumble there late in the game. That's what you want your seniors to do. They lead by example. Here we go, two tight ends right. Randolph making. Snap, ball to Frederick. Frederick finds an opening. Makes a man miss, trying to move past another, and stiff arms his way to a first down. But a, a flag coming out, I think. Frederick might have got his hand, his fingers wrapped around that face mask trying to stiff arm there. Yeah, either that or it could have been a hold maybe on the right side. We'll have to wait and see if they sort it out or when they sort it out. Ideally, if you're the Cougars, you want that to be a face mask. <laughs> right. Either one will be okay. Right. There was a lot of running room there for Frederick on that right side that time. Oh, there's the face mask, yep. And they're going to call it on the defense, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I've always uh, questioned that one, right? The offensive player can deliver blows, you know, to the face with a stiff arm, but the defensive player is, you know, right. not able to. I mean, do you think there's an unfair advantage there? And I, I think it is a little bit because, like you said, a running back can get his, his palm on that face mask, but like you said, defenders, anytime they're – Hands around that face mask. It's flag's probably going to be thrown. right, right. And it looked like Terrell England was called on that on the flag, and he probably just got extended out on the stiff arm, trying to reach for anything he could grab, and probably clipped a finger on the face mask. But nevertheless, first and ten inside the twenty for Randolph Macon. The Cougars had a big goal line stand here last time in this area, so let's see what they can do. Estes in the backfield. Quarterback power with Estes, and he's going to get tripped up from behind. That was. Joseph Ledbetter, I think he got in and got a piece of him. That was a great play by Ledbetter. He came all the way from the opposite side for the shoestring tackle. Just great hustle there. And that's a good way to scrape across the back of the offensive line and really chase down Estes and make the right play. Yeah, we mentioned Ledbetter. Only a sophomore defensive end out of Sanford, North Carolina. He's got a lot of potential that Ledbetter does. He's, he's big, he's strong, and he's disciplined. Yeah, had 62 tackles a season ago. And so here we go, second and long here. Randolph Macon still has the possibility to run it here without getting a pinch and third down. And they will do just that. Ball to Frederick on a stretch play. And that was Nicholas Mintz with a great open field tackle. And I will tell you what, Nick Mintz, a sophomore linebacker, he likes to bring what he calls the boomstick. <laughs> Nick Mintz will bring the power from that linebacker position. If he can get a open field hit on you, man. He's going to lay it on you. But like he you said. He brought it right there. Absolutely. Able to close the distance on someone like Frederick, and that's impressive. Yeah, super impressive. So that puts Randolph Macon third nine situation here. This is a big play for Randolph Macon and for Averett here. The Similar position here that they were in their last drive. Absolutely. Averett secondary needs to stay disciplined here. Different running back in. No Frederick. Play action. 
Estes in the backfield. And he found his running back just over the fingertips. That, that was, was yep. ju Justin Dele Deleon, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the junior running back. I'll tell you what, they had a touchdown. Yeah, they did. I mean, Estes found him. Deleon, Deleon, excuse me, has to make that grab. He's got to reel that in. He was wide open. They say when it hits your hands, you got to catch it. Could have been a little bit better of a throw, probably, but. But you've got to make that play. Right. You have to I make agree. that play. I agree. And so here we go. Colin Brooker, sophomore kicker, on for a second attempt of the day. This one a little bit longer than that first one. And it's on the left hash, so he's going to have to push it. And this one's up. It looks good, and it is good. So Brooker able to get his team on the board after the Cougars do another good job in the red zone of holding their heels, digging their heels in the dirt. Yeah, still pretty good job by the defense. And I think you got to you know hold your head high if you're that defense. You didn't let uh, seven points go up there. Still with the lead, 6-3. Uh, take a breath, give it back to your offense, see if you can get something rolling. And I couldn't imagine that Randolph Mankin is going to come out here and kick it to Joshua Tapscott. They're probably going to kick it anywhere to anybody other than Joshua Tapscott <laughs> at this situation. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea, right? <laughs> and that last kick, I mean, I don't know if that was just shorter than normal, but he got it on a running start near the 20, which that's something you definitely don't want to do when you got right. a good return man back there. And as a return man, I mean, that's what you're taught. You're taught to kind of give yourself a little bit of a running right. start so you can kind of be on the go. But I think Tapscott's probably going to move around and probably – return the kick wherever it's kicked as, as long as it's in his range. I agree with you, though. I would not be shocked if they, you know, throw one up here near the 35, 40-yard line and make a another guy return it. But, I mean, even Jaleel Webster, I mean, I don't want to kick to that guy either. He's got <laughs> some wills. He's faster than Josh Tapscott. And so here we go. Let's see where they place it at. High right, trying to get it away from those return men. Jaleel Webster catches it off the bounce. He's trying to find some room, but he gets swallowed up in the – the Cougars' offense will start inside the 20. That was well executed. I mean, that was that was a good kick there. And it, I think the big thing was that it took the hop first. If Webster could have caught it yeah. without it hitting the turf, it would have had that running start and maybe a chance to do something. Well, the problem was him and the up man were trying to communicate on who was going to get the ball. And, of course, you want, you'd want rather have Webster carry the ball. But if you're going to call off the up man, go and make the catch. Try not to let it bounce. Right. And those situations are so hard to really practice, right? I mean, that, right. that's just an in-game thing that it's, it's got to have uh, – it's, it's all feel, right? And the Cougars confident that they can pass. I mean, third straight play in a row where they go five ride. Play action to Webster. Jacob Wright running around looking for some space. He's going to slide down after about a two-yard pickup. Yeah, did a nice job escaping some pressure. Made me a little nervous there, the way he was carrying that football, though. I wish yeah. he tucked that down a little bit, but <laughs> picked up a couple yards. Tap Scott and Nautica McCollum back on the field. Got some heavy-duty players in there. And I think that's probably just going to keep keep the defense honest. Mm -hmm. With Tap Scott in the backfield, you can't play the pass as heavy if you're the defense. You got two receivers to the right. Jacob Wright steps back, steps up again, hits the sideline, and he's going to dive forward for about another four or five-yard pickup. Yeah, that time D'Angelo Barr pushed him out right before he got the first down. Referee actually is going to spot him short. He's going to be about five, six yards short there. Okay. So yeah, it it's hard for us to see on the far side. Must have stepped out a little bit before we thought. Tried to stretch it out a little bit. So it'll be about third and six here. So Cougars having trouble getting the play call on the field. What do you think here, third and five? Fifteen seconds left. They're going to have to hurry up. I think um, it depends. No running back in the backfield, so they're going to drop back. Jacob's probably going to look to try and make something happen on his feet. Or they might try and just throw it to the sideline here. Post across the middle of the field. Caught. And that is number 19, Deontay Lambright, the junior wide receiver. And he was able to stand in there. First of all, he bobbled the catch, but... Took a hard hit right after that and held on to the football. First down, Cougars. And, and what a catch by Lamprey. I mean, just able to hang on. He got hit, like you said. The throw wasn't perfect either. He had to go up, adjust to it midair, and uh, picks up the first down. Great catch by Deontay Lambright. Keeps the drive alive for the Cougars. That was a big play there. It was a huge play because up to that point, the Cougars haven't been able to generate any offense other than the return kickoff for a touchdown. Right, right. So here we go, ball to Joshua Tapscott. Tapscott takes it, trying to be patient. And it's Randolph making defense, flying around, 
not giving Tap Scott any room to any room to breathe. You know, we were talking to some of the players earlier this week, and they said that they might have to open up the offense a little bit more because of this defense and how good they are against the run. And I think we saw it right there as a host of defenders able to take down Tap Scott in the backfield. Well, at I don't know if you remember, as we were talking to them earlier in the week as well, they have a lot of athletes on the field. They don't have your 295-pound uh, nose tackles on the field. Everybody is athletic and can move around, so that really helps their ability to move sideline to sideline. Bobbled the snap flag on the play. Joshua Tapscott tackled in the backfield. Let's see what this flag was. Matt Vergara got there first for Randolph-Macon. We'll see what the laundry's all about here. Offsides on the defense. And I think they call that on Ty Tillman. Or excuse me, Steven Richardson, the sophomore cornerback. I think I heard him say number 14. Well, that's big, Eddie, because, I mean, it would have been third and long there and really nothing brewing, and all, all of a sudden it's second and five. You know, a lot of different things you can do now in second and manageable. Really changes, like you said, the landscape of what you're able to do here. You can either land, hand it off to Josh Tapscott or, in this case, Jaleel Webster's in the game. Yeah, see if they can get Webster going a little bit. Four verse concept, Jaleel Webster against a corner. And Jaleel Webster in and out of the hands. I'll Jacob Wright. What, it was a perfect throw. It was absolutely perfect. Jacob Wright looking for a flag, Twenty number 20 pushing off, but... Like you said, a perfect throw right over the hand of the cornerback and into the hands of Jaleel Webster. I think Jaleel Webster thought it might have been a little too good to be true there moment. What we never know, though, was Webster a little bit shielded by the defender? Did he actually right. see it coming in? Right. And, you know, that can happen. You can lose sight of the ball in a split second. All it takes is you know, take your eye off it for a minute and you miss it. Almost a real big play, though. Almost, And that would have been huge for the Averitt offense. Motion with Isaiah Grice. Three receivers to his side. Right escaping, looking, trying to find Grice. Finds Lambright instead, and Lambright still holds on to the football. Lambright, two big plays in a row. I'll tell you what, this senior wide receiver, Lambright, has come to play. Two big catches. That one didn't have to go up and adjust to it. That was a better throw by Wright, but still able to haul it in. And check that, he's a junior. Lambright, two big plays on this drive now. And I'll tell you what. That's going to open this Averitt offense up. Even though Jaleel dropped that pass, that's a look that really gets your morale up. Lambright, two big catches. That's going to open up this passing, and that's going to make Jacob Wright more confident. And Wright did a great job of being patient. He yep. could have ran with it. He could have you know, threw it away, but waited for that to develop. Speed option here, Jacob Wright, Jaleel Webster, and Wright goes down smart, picks up about five yards. Yeah, very smart and heady play there by the QB. Get down. You don't want to take a big blow there. and Picked up five yards, too. And we're going to take a break here at the Avery Sports Network. Your Cougars lead it 6-3. to three. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Start of the second quarter, your Cougars lead it 6-3, to three, and they are driving the field. Deontay Lambright, two big catches on this drive. And let's see if the Avery Cougars can finish this drive off and add six more points on the scoreboard. I'll tell you what, Eddie, i really like to see this running game pick up a little bit, see if they can get Tapscott going. And Tapscott hurdles a defender and not able to gain his feet on the other side of that hurdle. Yeah, D'Angelo Barr got hurdled but still did enough to bring down Tapscott. Pretty athletic move, though. Yeah, by the Josh running Josh Tapscott able to, able to get up 
get up and over the defender. And Wow. <laughs> Actually picked up a yard, too, so it makes this third down a little easier now. Third and about four yards here. Jacob Wright, Tapscott in the backfield. Tapscott pointing out defensive ends. Wright finds Grice. Grice wide open. Can he find the end zone? He's pushed out. He's going to be pushed out at about the four-yard line, and what a find. Great throw and catch, but I'll tell you who really made that play go. Tapscott did a great job because there were plenty of defenders who thought he had the football moving to the left, really opened things up then on the right side for Grice. And a lot of running backs on play action, they kind of lazily go through it, but Tapscott, like you said, did a good job of really selling that fake. Now they're in business inside the five. Two tight ends right for the Cougars. Tapscott's still in the backfield, two receivers to the left. And a quarterback power design run there gets it down to about the two-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. And there's a Randolph making player down. And there's laundry all over the field now. Yeah, it looks like after it could the play. Be, I think it's Victor Robinson who was shaken up. And let's see what the flag was. That's probably going to be a unsportsmanlike conduct that late after the play. Sportsmanlike conduct against the Cougars. Well, this is going to back them up. And that's not going to make Coach Cleve Adams happy getting all the way down to the two-yard line and making a mental error like that. Yeah, you never like to see those 15-yard penalties, but especially when you're in the red zone. And I believe that was actually called against Jacob Wright, number six. Yeah, I didn't really see what happened there at the end of the play. I mean, he took a decent hit, got up, but... I don't know if maybe some Randolph-making players were hanging onto his legs late after the play could have been. kind of mm -hmm. frustrated him, or he's kind of talking to the ref, explaining himself there. But nevertheless, we're going to have to move on. Five wide for the Cougars. That backs them up 15 yards. But it is just second down, so they have some downs to work with. Motion with Jaleel Webster. Jacob Wright's going to keep it, trying to find the outside. He does find it down inside the 10. He's going to be spotted at about the five-yard line. Jacob Wright picks up those 15 yards. Well, he gets right back to where they had the football a moment ago, but now it's going to be third down. I'll tell you what, Webster, if he would have got that ball, he had some room to work with on the right side. So that was really open on both sides. And right. the, yep, go ahead. The thing about this is Jacob Wright, every time they've run that motion, he's kept it. Yeah. So the defense is – I wonder if they're going to start to be Jacob Wright heavy and Jaleel Webster might be able to keep it around the end one of those times. Perhaps they're maybe keeping that one in their back pocket. <laughs> Three receivers to the right for Jacob Wright. Big play here. Bootleg out. He had a receiver open. Don't know if you saw him. Wow. And that's going to be a touchdown. Cougars and who else but Deontay Lambright. Lambright, three big catches on the drive, and that one caps it off. Jacob Wright, again, just making that play extend. And really, it almost looked like he was going to throw it away there late, but then finds Lambright in the back of the end zone. And Jacob Wright does such a good job of keeping his eyes open when he's on the run, keeping his eyes down the field. As Lambright was in the back of the end zone, waving his hands, <laughs> begging for the football, and Wright able to find him and adds another six to the board. Cole Can't stress that enough, too. I mean, that's, that's big uh, with Lampright having three catches on that drive. And Westbury puts the PAT through. That makes it 13-3. to three. The Cougars take an early 10-point lead. Ladies and gentlemen, Avery University was just ranked 15th best regional liberal arts college in the South by USA News and World Report in 2020, as well as ranked 7th among best colleges for veterans and 8th for best value. Additionally, Avery was recognized by U.S. News for ethnic diversity, social mobility, and best undergraduate teaching. These rankings are made possible through our dedicated faculty and staff, our hardworking and engaged student body, and through the leadership of our trustees and generous benefactors. Congratulations to the entire university family on this achievement. I'll tell you what, Eddie, we thought here coming in today that Avert was going to have to open it up a little bit, open up the playbook, throw it a little bit more than they may be accustomed to. I mean, last week, Randolph-Macon, the longest rushing attempt went for eight yards. 
Uh, that was their longest run um, against Randolph-Macon last week, talking about Johns Hopkins. And uh, we're seeing that from Avery, right? I mean, they're really opening up in the passing game, and that got them down uh, and on the board and up 10. Another kick into the end zone. This time it's going to be brought out by Randolph-Macon. Can the Cougars stay disciplined? And they're finally able to bring down Jordan Foster, the senior kick returner for Randolph-Macon. And you're right. And as a broadcaster, this is probably the most times already I've ever seen Avery go five wide in a game. And they're really, like you said, opening it up, let, letting Jacob Wright really scan the field and use his eyes as a quarterback and really make something happen. Yeah, that's why having a quarterback who can run, who's who's mobile, but can also throw. I mean, it's just such a luxury to have when you've got that dual threat. Randolph making on offense, looking to get things started here. They're able to drive the field, but not able to finish it off. Trips right for Randolph making here. Trey Frederick motioned out. They're going to throw a halfback swing out to him. And, I mean, a great job there. And that was number two. Quaylen Keaton, the senior safety, and on the play. Quaylen able to step in and really bully his wide receiver open, extend his arm out, and square up against Trey Frederick and make an open field tackle. We heard that one up here. <laughs> Absolutely. Keaton laid a lick there. Big time play. It's another big stop by the Cougars there. The Randolph Macon offensive coordinator is trying to get Frederick out in open space, letting him move, but the Cougars doing a good job of rallying and buzzing their feet, staying disciplined here. Big man set here for Randolph Macon, second and eight. Motion over. And Estes is going to keep it, but Javon Lofton has none of it. I'll tell you what, Lofton is winning that one-on-one -on -one battle. He's been in the backfield how many times now? Three, four, five times. I mean, at least in the backfield ready to make a play. Absolutely, and it's because this defensive line is so stacked. You have to put two people on Joseph Ledbetter. You have to put two people on Romello Herbin. So that gives running lanes for people like Malik Pulliam and Javon Lofton. And Javon Lofton winning the battles, taking advantage of his opportunities, tackling the backfield. Third and ten for Randolph Macon here. And I'm starting to see what you're talking about with Lofton at 285 and the way he can move. Right. <laughs> right. And here we go. Tight end, two receivers to the left for Randolph Macon. Estes calls for it. He drops back. Three-step drop and a sack by Joseph Ledbetter. Well, it's been the Ledbetter and Lofton show on defense. And again, got him from behind, winning that one-on-one -on -one battle. Big-time play. <laughs> Just like that, the Cougars, that's a big stand right there. And, and the Cougars are looking really good against a team who came in ranked number 24 in the nation. Oh, this is super impressive. You know, Everett's got a lot of expectations, too. Preseason pick number one in the USA South. So both these teams... Living up to it so far. And this is Jaleel Webster back for the punt. Hanging around the left hash here. That ball was punted sky high with some hang time. Fair catch called for. And it's going to get spotted on the 40-yard line. And this Cougar offense who just scored a touchdown just two minutes ago back on the field. And good field position, too. They'll start at the 40-yard line here, so... I'd still like to see that running game pick up. I, I, I wouldn't go away from it, right? I mean, while it hasn't been working, still try to grind it out because if you can have that, it's nice when you have a lead to be able to pick up three, four, five yards on the ground. And with somebody like Tap Scott, he's going to be patient. And, and like you said, as long as you keep feeding him the ball, he's going to break one. Mm -hmm. He's going to break one. Ball goes to Tap Scott on a stretch play. Tap Scott finding some open and still on his feet. He picks up about four. That was a nice little stutter step that time by Tapscott. Pick up a couple extra yards. And it looks like Randolph making a plan there. Corners a little closer to these Averett receivers. They were in a press formation there. Trying to get in and get into the grill of these Averett wide receivers after some big plays on that last drive. Here we go, same set for the Cougars. Ball going to Tap Scott again. Stays patient, still on his feet, still moving forward is Tap Scott. Yeah, Calvin Whitehead did a nice job, the senior there, middle linebacker, to meet Tap Scott. But then Tap Scott, like you said, just kept those feet churning. And so that makes it about third and five, third and six. And I think it's officially listed at third and seven. Third and six, rather, excuse me. Jaleel Webster back on the field. 
as Tapscott comes out. So a five wide set here for Jacob Wright. They've had success in this formation. Motion, play action, receivers running downfield wide open. And I'll tell you what, Delquan Bigelow was wide open. I don't think Jacob Wright had the confidence that his feet was up under him enough to make a long pass like that. But nevertheless, the Cougars were bringing their punt team on up by 10. Right. Maybe if he was sitting in the pocket, had a chance to settle in, maybe take that shot downfield. But, you know, that's not a terrible decision there. Throw it where only your guy can make the catch. Right. If not, you come on out, you punt it, you're up 13-3. And you don't want to make throws that you're not confident in, especially throws 20-plus yards down the field because then balls get wobbly and DBs are able to make a break on them. So, like you said, you're up by 10. Make the safe play here. Cole Westbury back to punt. And he put some leg on this one. And a horde of Cougars down there. Oh, wow. But Anthony Williams able to get free. He had three Cougars standing right in front of him. Yeah, Anthony right. Williams, big-time defensive player, but also returns kicks, almost broke one. Able to make three men miss there. Get down the sideline a little bit. And maybe that will juice up his offense a little bit here. But this Cougar defense, I mean, the past two drives at least have been flying around. Sure have. Uh, and it's been Javon Lofton up front, and it's been Ledbetter on the outside. Those two guys really single-handedly have just made big play after big play for the defense. And if you're a run-heavy team and your offensive line can't get going, that really stifles your offense. It really puts a halt to your offense and what they can do. Yeah, Lofton up front. Watch him here on his first down play. Frederick in the backfield with Estes. Trying to go to quick out route there, and Keaton almost able to get his hand on it. Nevertheless, about a four-yard pickup, five-yard pickup there. Yeah, Mike uh, Evans, the sophomore, six-foot, 171. Got some interesting names on this team, don't they? They sure do. <laughs> Mike Evans and Steve McNair. <laughs> No relation, we had to check on that, but no relation to uh, Air McNair, as he was called. It was worth the shot, right? I mean, right. That, would, that would have been a good story to tell. <laughs> no receivers this way towards the near side of the screen for Randolph Macon. Ball goes to, Tr to Frederick, Trey Frederick, excuse me, and he picks up a first down for the Yellow Jackets. That was a pretty nice job by the defense to contain Frederick, but picked up enough for the first down. And that was actually Justin DeLeon, excuse me, on that carry. Randolph making really a traditional team. I mean, you don't see teams, very many teams, lean on the run game or still use huddles pre-play. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to wonder then if, if Frederick's okay because we haven't seen him yet, yet then on this drive, I don't think. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Here we go. Ball back to DeLeon, and he's wrapped up there. Can't get a number on that. I think that was number 14, Ty Tillman for the Cougars. Yeah, Tillman came up and made a really nice open field play. There was a lot of green area if he doesn't make that tackle. 7.20 on the clock here in the second quarter. And this defense trying to get their crowd pumped on a second and long play right here. It's a big play because, again, we talked about it earlier. Randolph Macon does not like third and long situations. So. Randolph Macon single back coming out under center. And a timeout called. So we're going to take a quick break here. Seven minutes, six seconds to go. Your Cougars lead it by ten. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds, and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete. Five wide for Randolph Macon out of the timeout break. A 
very different look than when they entered the timeout break. They were single back under center. So five wide for Estes here. Cougars defensive back step forward in a press formation. And they do jam. Estes avoids Showalter. Estes still on his feet. Estes still on his feet. And that's Nick Mintz finally bringing him down. That was a great play there by Estes. Looked like it was a definite uh, sack in the backfield. Stepped up nicely and found the first down. Showalter was back there, just not able to bring the slippery Estes down. And just like that, that's a Yellow Jackets first down. And as you mentioned, still no sign of Frederick this drive. And that's quite odd for a Frederick-heavy offense. Yeah, Frederick missed this game last year, if I'm not mistaken, too, with an injury. But, I mean, he is the guy that makes this offense go. And if it's worth note, he is right there by the head coach and offensive coordinator. But De Leon. So it could still. just be that they've elected to, to go with the junior. I mean, he's picking up about anywhere from four to seven yards of carry. So why not if he's red hot and Frederick on cue back on the field? And this has been the most consistent Randolph-Macon has, has moved the football here today, too, on offense in this drive. Did I make it second and threes, or second and two, rather? So really, uh, still a down where they can run the football here. With Frederick in the backfield, they come in under the center. Two receivers, or one receiver to either side. Frederick in the backfield, single back formation. Estes motions over a receiver. Ball goes to Frederick, and Frederick finding some space. And that's the first down for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Terrell England pushed him out, but you could see some fresh legs that time. Yeah, and and that's what happens. They and they did lean heavy on Frederick in that first quarter. Really mm -hmm. ran him about 15 times in that first quarter. So able to get him a break, let him get some some water and some fluids in him. Yep, and looked just like, like he, that, he picks up about 12. Yeah, it looked like he had a little extra burst there as he caught the corner. Here we go. Time still ticking. First down just outside the red zone here for Randolph Macon. Ball back to Frederick. Finds a hole and bursts through it. Inside the 10 is Randolph Macon. And Estes is signaling for a hurry up offense here, trying to catch this Cougar defense off, off guard. Yeah, and I think they're just winning those one on one battles up front right now. And they want to keep that going here. This has been a pretty impressive drive here by Randolph-Macon. And that's going to be a timeout called on the field with 5.06 remaining in the second quarter. This Randolph-Macon team is driving the football. Can the Cougars stop it? Up 10. First down and 10 from about the 11. So might as well call it first and goal. Randolph making trails by 10, but they can cut that lead down by seven or at least six right here if they can score. Estes, play action, but he decides to keep it himself, and Quaylen Keaton lays the wood there on Estes. I'll tell you what, Quaylen Keaton has two tackles that are on my count today, and they've both been some loud tackles. I'll tell you what, Zach, I'm just glad I'm not on the receiving end on either, either of those tackles because he is out there and he is not holding anything back. That was a big play. Second down and 10. See if they go back to Frederick here. Or you mentioned, too, play action could be open now that they've run it so much on this drive. Trips left. 
Gonna to go with a naked boot. Got a player running towards Essie's. And Showalter almost comes down with the interception. Just out of the reach. That would have been a heck of a play by Showalter. Still a great play to bat it down. Diving backwards. I mean, he held on to it for a little bit. But I think, you know, going out of the other side of that dive, he kind of, you know, lost control of it. But like you said, either way, a great athletic play there by Connor Showalter. And this is going to set up a huge third down here from the 11. And you can see everybody on the sideline wants everybody in the crowd to make some noise here for that Cougar defense. And the fans are, I think they're just not noticing. Hey, it's, it's third and 10 from the 11. Let's, let's help our team out here. They are getting loud. Obvious passing down right here, 11 yards away from Paydirt. Esty snapped the ball, three-step drop. Oh. And an interception. That's Terrell England. And he's still on his feet, Terrell England, with space to go. Terrell England still on his feet. He might just go all the way. Terrell England with Trey Frederick is the only man to beat Terrell England. A pick six from about 81 yards away. And you want to talk about a turn of events, Eddie. How about that? I mean, take it all the way back for six. And did a great job of being patient as well, did England, because he waited for that final blocker. And he was able to take it to the house. Wow. And we're going to take a break here as there is an Avery player down. Romello Herbin is down. We're going to take a small break here while he has helped off the field. Going back to school is not just for the kids. Avery University has degree programs for working adults who want to pursue their bachelor's or master's online or on campus. Visit gps.averett.edu for more information. And welcome back. Huge play there, Eddie, and it's good to see the injured player now back up on his feet. And like you said, Romello Urban able to get up and walk off under his own power. I wonder if it was just a real bad cramp there, but either way, I mean, what a big-time play there for the Cougars up 19-3 to now. Yeah, it started with Quaylen Keaton. School record on the return, it sounds like, too. But started with uh, Quaylen Keaton, the big hit. I mean, just a couple big plays by the defense back-to-back. 89-yard interception return for a pick six. And as you mentioned, that is a school record. Longest pick six in school history. Now belongs to Mr. Terrell England. And, and that was Cole Westbury able to put the extra point through. 20-3. to three. The Cougars up 17 points to a team they've never beat four minutes before halftime. Yeah, 0-8 all-time against Randolph-Macon. But we talked about it at the top, Eddie. These last two years, that gap has been narrowing, right? This program's turning the corner 8-2 and two a season ago, talking about the Cougars. And they're looking to keep it going. I'll tell you what, I know this is my first time seeing them live, but I like the direction they're heading. Absolutely, and we mentioned the consistency in coaching. A lot of good, experienced players. We've seen Junior, Deontay Lambright, making big catches. Junior, Terrell England, 89-yard mm -hmm. pick six. The senior kicker, Cole Westbury, punching in PATs. Senior, Tap Scott and Wright in the backfield. Senior, Showalter and Keaton showing out. I mean, experience is key for this Averitt team. Right. You know, we, we, we always spotlight a few players, right? But this first half has really been the entire units. I Absolutely. mean, you're seeing big plays across the board on both sides of the ball. And so let's just hope that, you know, this is this was just one half of play. So let's hope this Cougar team doesn't go into halftime with a big head and come out, you know, making mental errors because just Randolph Macon was just the number 24 ranked team in the nation. Oh, the yeah. The 24th best team in the nation. So they can make it happen. So the Cougars have to stay disciplined. Trey Frederick almost found a gap there on the return. Yeah, and this team, they're not going to just sit down and, and say, okay, well, you got us. I mean, they're going right. to keep coming. Um, this is a really good football team, well coached. This is a team that rarely gets penalized. I mean, that kind of speaks to the, the grittiness, the toughness of their style and um, very disciplined football team that, like you said, they're not going to go away. And we have to understand that Pedro Aruz is going to go into halftime and he's going to make adjustments. Oh, yeah. He's not going to come back out with the same game plan. He's going to make adjustments, and we have to be ready for that. And, and, and some people will tell you, you know, they've been around football a long time, it's all about those halftime adjustments. Who can make the better adjustment? Usually who wins the football game in close contests. Trips left for Randolph-Macon. 
And what a tackle for loss by Joseph Ledbetter. Ledbetter again. <laughs> I mean, this guy's just been everywhere. He's tracked down running backs from behind. He's met them head on. I mean, just winning that battle right now. And, and we talk about experience, but Ledbetter's only a sophomore. So he's got all of this here and two more years of potential and improvement. And he's looking very polished as a player right now. Yeah, almost had 16 tackles for loss a season ago. I can count two or three just today where he's been in the backfield making big plays for this Cougars defense. And we mentioned that Avery defensive line before the game, and, man, they have stepped up to the challenge of this big-time offensive line. Here we go with Estes, a snug formation. Play action for Estes. He's getting pressure, and that's going to be – that's going to be Jonathan Terrell in on the tackle. I'll tell you what, Terrell was able to get there because now they've got to start double-teaming Ledbetter. They had two guys on Ledbetter. What's that do? It opens things up for the rest of the defense right. to make big plays. And just like that, it's third in the country mile here for Randolph Macon. And, I mean, if there was ever a passing down, this is an obvious passing down. The Cougars still – looks like they've got about three defensive linemen on the field. And this is a team very young at wide receiver. They don't really throw it much. They're not comfortable being in this situation. So let's see if they try and just play it safe and get to the punt. And that's DeLeon. That's got room. And he's still on his feet. He's going to be able to pick up this first down. And how about that off of a third and 18? That was well designed, too. I mean, because he kind of hit his way, and he kind of got to that spot and just sat there and waited for the quarterback yeah. to find him. And, in fact, I didn't really see him as, as we're sitting here watching the game. I couldn't even see him until he had it and he was uh, already at the 30-yard line. And I was getting kind of concerned. I didn't see any receivers going down the field for Randolph Macon past that first down marker. And, like you said, running back just popped up out of nowhere and was able to get behind some blockers and make something happen here. That was big. Gets the chains moving. Randolph Macon, first and ten here, moving the football. Ball goes back to DeLeon and – Trucks his way forward for another first down. Yeah, Deontay Newville got the brunt of that. As DeLeon lowered the shoulder, he's a big back. He is, and that was a good job of uh, Newville able to stand in there and make that open field tackle. Yeah, they got DeLeon listed at 5'11", 178, but he sure looks bigger than that. He definitely looks bigger than 178, I'll tell you that much. And not in a bad way. No, I mean, <laughs> it looks like he's just a solid, you know, 195, if I had to take a guess. Estes, and they go right back to the right back to DeLeon, right back to the ground game. What's been holding them tight this whole game? And they lean on it, whether they're down 17 or 0-0, zero, zero, they're going to lean on that run game. Yeah, now Frederick will come back in, but again now he's got some fresh legs because DeLeon's been able to move it, uh, move the chains a couple times, and they're really working both backs here quite a bit the last couple drives. And Randolph Macon is going to have to start passing in here. I know they're on the – green side of the 50 for them but they're under a minute to go before halftime and they go with another run Trey Frederick able to find some space he turns the corner Terrell England brings him down it be careful on the hand placement there I thought it might have been a horse collar and that was identical to the last time he got a little blow he went to the sideline then he what do you have a big run going out to the right side knocked out by England same thing here and and honestly that's what you want if you're a Randolph making head coach, he runs out of bounds, stops the clock. Right. And yep, just that was like big. that, they're, they're able to, you know, really catch their breath, breathe, and they're on the 15-yard line. They got a couple timeouts left here if they need them. This Cougar defense needs to stop. Don't want to let a touchdown up right before the half. That will be a huge blow to the momentum. Play action. Swing out left. And Randolph Macon able to get into the end zone. That's number 22, the senior wide receiver, Trey Owens. Trey Owens, uh, you know, snuck his way out of one tackle, and that's all he needed and to find pay dirt. And got to make that play on the outside, but even a better play by the offensive wide receiver, the senior. And as we mentioned, they're not comfortable passing, but – when they do pass, who do they go to? Their senior wide receiver. Right, and it was a quick hitter, right? It's not down the field. It's not like a huge post route or something like that. It's just get the ball out quick, get it to one of your playmakers and see if he can. But when you've been running the ball like that all game, I mean, a quick play action, swing out left, I mean, that's all you need. Right, yeah, that, that play would definitely be open, especially those linebacker, linebackers start creeping up to stop the run. So the PAT, the PAT excuse me, was missed by Brooker. 
So that still makes it 20 to 9, an 11 point lead here for the Cougars with about 35 seconds to go. So I could only imagine that, you know, if this, unless this kickoff goes to the house, that the Cougars are going to come out and kneel the ball and take it into the take it into halftime. And I think you're right. I think that's the right thing to do. But for the Yellow Jackets on the other side, I mean, that's big. Going into halftime, making yes. it 20 to nine. Now you can go in there and say, okay, we've got something to build on. Really, those last two drives, right. they moved the football pretty well. And I'm sure they'll be, you know, that'll be addressed at halftime. And how can we, you know, sustain that in the second half? As for Averett, they've been pretty solid on both sides. But of course, there's going to be some adjustments on their end too. And you're right, having that touchdown, I mean, even even though they haven't been able to get anything kick-started all game, that touchdown right before the half, you know, really evens everything out. You know, it evens the momentum out almost and really hits reset on, on the game. And they'll get the ball to start the third quarter too. So, I mean, they're going to come out with a you know, chance to, you know, make this even a closer ball game to start the third. Ball is pooched up towards Romello Herbin. Yeah, they are no longer kicking the ball to Mr. <laughs> Tapscott. Right? That is a no-go. <laughs> and I can only imagine that that would be the case for most teams. Tapscott back-to-back -back kickoff returns in, or back-to-back -back games where he's returned to kick to the house. I doubt any team really comes out here and, and you know, gives it to Tapscott. But I saw Tapscott kind of uh, motion to Jacob Wright to really heave the ball down the field. I wonder if they're going <laughs> to try a uh, oh you mean here on the yeah. offensive set okay well, no they're in victory formation here they're gonna they're gonna need the ball here and so that's gonna looks like there might be some confusion about the time but Avery's gonna take this to the locker room here yeah I think it's a good decision too you got a 20 to 9 uh, lead and these fans are excited, and they should be. I mean, this Averitt football team, really, really strong first half, but you got to seal the deal here in the third and fourth quarter. And as you mentioned, your Averitt University Cougars lead by 11 after a stellar first half of football. Really couldn't ask for a much better football. Uh, on both sides of the uh, of the field, 20 to 9, your Cougars lead it against Randolph-Macon College. And let's see if they can keep their heads on straight in the locker rooms and come out and play the second half just like the first half.
If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. What makes Avery special to me is the family-oriented and diverse background and communities. Here at Avery, we believe in one family, one team philosophy. As an RA, being able to guide people in the right direction and building a community helps me develop leadership. Also, being a leader on the football team and captain, it helps me guide people to be better each and every way. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds, and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete.
And welcome back to Daily Field at Frank R. Campbell Stadium. I mean, your favorite University Cougars, if you didn't know, we're winning 20 to 9 after a big time first half for these Cougars. They really, I mean, as much as they could, kept Travis Frederick or Trey Frederick at bay with just 107 yards on the ground and only let up 67 yards in the air. Yeah, he's got 14 carries, speaking of Frederick, for 107 yards. But really, those yards uh, were kind of in the middle of drives. They never really materialized into points uh, necessarily. And, uh, you know, the Averitt defense, they bend it a little bit, but they did not break. And I think that's really, really big in the red zone. They held their ground a few times in that first half. And we'll see uh, what these teams do coming out here in the third quarter. And like you said, they, they would bend and not break. They let up one touchdown all first half. And really, the Randolph-Macon offense would get all the way down inside the red zone, and the Averitt defense would make a big stop. Yeah, I mean, a lot of big plays in that first half. I think the biggest, though, was that 99-yard interception returned by Terrell England. You're right, and like you said, the longest in school history, 99 yards official um, by Terrell England, and he is now the record holder here in this school. So you've got to think after a big-time first half like that, he's excited to get back out. Yeah, there's some kind of trend here. There's, there's this 99-yard thing. Didn't that happen last week too with, with Josh Tapscott? It sounds familiar. Sounds real familiar. I think these, these players are trying to one-up each other with – who can take take the ball the longest distance to the end zone? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little friendly competition. And so Randolph Macon will start the drive here at about the 25. Estes in the backfield. Let's see what adjustments they've made. Play action immediately. Play action smoke screen. And that picks up. It's going to pick up about six. Yeah, that was Trey Owens. Again, we saw that play, the exact play ran in the first half down in the red zone. It actually went for a touchdown. Yep. Owens broke a tackle and and went into the score. So first play out here in the third quarter, they open up with it. And the Randolph-Macon coaching staff showing confidence in Estes opening up with the pass instead of take. I mean, could have just as easily gone to Frederick on the ground and probably would have picked up the same amount realistically, but showing some confidence in Estes here, letting him open up with a pass. Here we go, Frederick in the backfield, second and about five. And they're going to go to Frederick this time, and he had some daylight, but quickly shut down by that Cougar defense. Yeah, I think it was number 15, Nicholas Mintz, got there first. And you're right, there was an avenue there for a first down, it looked like, until that hole was plugged pretty quick, I mean, uh, by Mintz and company. And you could see that Frederick tried to hit that hole. He he hit that extra gear of speed yeah. trying to, you know, really burst through that hole and break off a big run. But Nicholas Mintz said, no, sir. This is big now, third and one. Third and one. I don't know. I, I really don't know if they run the ball here or – if they maybe go play action, now, we've seen them go with a, a fake run quarterback power. They might try that here with Estes. And they do go with that quarterback power. And Estes is going to pick up about nine. Yeah, they picked up the first down. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they actually go to the backup, uh, Andrew Ely, but that time they let Estes take it. And it was enough for a first down. I don't mean to be like Tony Romo and just ru ruin the game before you play. Before oh, I think play, it's great. Know? No, no, it's great. <laughs> Here we go, Randolph. It's pretty remarkable, game. honestly, what he's able to do, isn't it? Absolutely. He calls out every play. Every single play. First and ten here, Randolph making two receivers to the right for Estes. Ball goes to Estes. He's going to fake it to Frederick. A great fake there, and it's going to. Keep Estes on his feet. Well, it fooled me. I think it fooled both of us. It did. And it fooled some of the defenders on the Averitt side, too. Nice play design there and another first down. And Randolph Macon, I'll tell you what, this is the third drive in a row now that they've really looked pretty solid and see if they can continue here and get some more points. The key to their offense is through the run game. That's the key. If Averitt can stop this run game, then, you know, they'd be able to make some progress. But there's really no stopping Trey Frederick. There's really just – keeping him out of the end zone, and that's what you have to try and do. Trips left for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, you're not going to stop a great player like Frederick, but you can contain him, and I think they've done a nice job to this point. And knocking Frederick around there as he picks up six. Yeah, good first down run there. and yeah, This, this feels like that second-to-last drive in the second quarter, just slowly, you know, and churning out five, six yards. But Averitt, you know, they've done a nice job. They've been in this situation before. We mentioned they didn't break, though. They bended and, you know, they got down to the 30, 20-yard line and then a couple field goal attempts in that first quarter by Randolph Macon. And here we go, second and five. Estes under center. Let him go with a strong formation here. Tight end left or tight end right, fullback right. 
Receiver motions inward. And they're going to go with Frederick to the right. You know, there's really no no hiding it here with Randolph right. Rankin, what they're going to do. That was old school power football. You don't <laughs> see it a lot anymore. It wasn't necessarily the eye formation. A little offset eye, but same kind of concepts and principles there. Absolutely. So here we go. Third down and about three yards to go. Another third down play. They were able to pick up third and one. This is a little bit longer here. Third and about three. Estes with Frederick in the backfield. Cougar safety is creeping inwards. Estes with another quarterback power, and he's going to pick up another first down. Yeah, didn't get much more after the first down, but got about four or five, and that's enough. And the name of the game for Randolph making is four yards at a time. Four yards at a time, that's going to get us a first down. Every, every, every four downs, that'll get us a first down. Yeah, on the other side for the Cougars, they could, they just need one big play. We saw Lofton make a ton in that first half. We saw Ledbetter, you know, a tackle for loss can change the whole complexion of this drive. But as we mentioned, Coach Aruza going to make adjustments at halftime. He's not going to lay down and just say, like you said, oh, you got me. Right. He's going to make adjustments, and those adjustments have worked out very well. It's Frederick shaking and baking and moving down inside the 15-yard line. Now, that was a really good run. I mean, Frederick, he had a little room to run, but I don't think he had that much. He did a lot of that on his own in the second level there. I mean, his footwork inside the hole and moving through traffic is just amazing. His traffic, Frederick, and his field vision, his ball carrier vision is just impeccable. Yeah, when you mix good vision with that kind of skill set that Frederick already has, deadly combination. So here we go. Ball on about the 14-yard line for Randolph Macon. They've been in this position before. They've turned it open, turned it over from about this yardage. And the Cougars, I believe that's Connor Showalter, and it is. Yep. Wrapping up Frederick in the backfield. And that's what I'm talking about. One of those big plays, tackles for loss, just to put them now in a second and ten rather than a second and five. Right. Very, you know, different situation here. And another stop right here would be great if you're a Cougars, if you're a part of the Cougars defense. Uh, Stop right here. Hold them inside of three yards would be fantastic. Now, this is a little different now. Let's see what they're going to do. Will they open it up here again and go back to the passing game or give it to Frederick? Ball goes to Frederick. Frederick, and he picks up about three yards. So that's what you want if you're a Cougars fan. Third and seven, and that makes it an obvious passing down. Forces Estes and his Randolph making offensive coordinating staff to open up their playbook. And I'll tell you what, that was Nicholas Mintz again. He's having a nice game. You know, yeah. We've talked a lot about Lofton. We've talked a lot about Ledbetter, but very quietly, Nicholas Mintz also having a nice and game Nicholas, on the defense. Nicholas Mintz able to learn from Dijon Brooks last year, who had over 200 tackles in his career here at Averett. So a great middle linebacker to learn from, but Nicholas Mintz able to, like you said, have a great game. Third and seven here. Randolph making spread set, two receivers either side. Here we go with Estes. One step drop, quick slant, and that ball was dropped. So I believe that's going to bring on Colin Bro Brooker, and it does for a field goal attempt. A great job by that Avery secondary to knock around the receiver and really draw that ball loose. Yeah, three or four guys got there, but Mintz was in there again yeah. uh, with a nice hard hit. And that would have been enough for a first down, but big stop here, another field goal attempt. So, again, bending but not breaking Right. this Avery defense. Let's see if Brooker can punch it in. He's had some troubles today. And the ball was actually fumbled. Ball up in the air. And it hits the ground, and it's okay because it's fourth down. Whether we got the interception <laughs> or it hit the ground, we're hitting the ball back anyway. So, fans, you can you can rejoice and be happy. It's Avery Cougars football. I can't help to laugh, but there was a big guy. I think it might have been Lofton who really <laughs> wanted that interception right. because, you know, those big guys, they don't get that opportunity all the time <laughs> to get their hands on the football now. Right. And uh, But still, big play there. And Avery takes over on downs. Maybe Coach Cleve Adams will let him line up in the red zone at tight end or something, try and get him the ball on that out route or something. We've <laughs> seen it work. It can work. It can work. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jacob Wright and his favorite offense back on the field. Ball goes to Wright. It, nice fake, but he's not going to be able to make much over, much more than two or three yards happen. But a flag in the backfield more than likely going to be holding. Yeah, usually when it's in that vicinity, that's what you see. But you never know till the official call happens. Right. 
I think they are going to get somebody for a hold here. You know, that negates about a three, four yard gain there. Not necessarily the way you want to start off on offense starting the second half, but you know, it it can it can be amended, it can be fixed. Um, we mentioned before halftime, you don't want to go into half with this big lead and come out and make mental errors. So the Cougars really have to tighten up those screws and and really lock down and buckle down and play like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, this is this is where ball security becomes really, really important. It's always important, but especially when you're in this position, right. backed up behind your, you know, behind uh, close to your end zone. And expect a blitz here from Randolph Macon right with his heels on the goal line. They do bring five right, able to get away. And look, he might have been trying to find Isaiah Grice, but Grice wasn't, you know, far enough towards the sideline. But they brought five with it. With Jacob Wright's heels on the goal line, and the Cougars face a a second and long. Yeah, he's lucky to get that ball off. Yeah. Looked like it was going to be a sack. But an interesting uh, play call there. I mean, you think you know, oftentimes backed up like this. Well, let's just run it a couple times, see if we can't you know get out of our own end zone. But they elected to open it up. We'll see what they do here on second down. Well, they're in a running set, and they have the numbers for it here. In an ace formation, almost a pistol set. Ball goes to Tapscott. Tapscott almost had some daylight, but it closed up quickly by the Yellow Jackets, and that brings up about a third and 13. Yeah, a host of guys in there on the stop. Tapscott really has not been able to get going here, but I like that they're continuing to feed the running back, see if he don't, doesn't break one eventually. More of their receiving package coming on. Chase Nixon, Deontay Lambright. So here we go. Five wide for Mr. Wright. Does have a little bit more breathing room, but still not much. Third and 14. Ball snap. Five-step drop. Wright finds Nixon. A drag. Headed towards the sideline, and Nixon able to turn that in. He might have, he does pick up the first down. And there's a late flag, too. We could get a late hit. They might be tacking on here. But we'll see what the play is. That was wide open. Great play call. And it looks like that Averitt sideline does not like what they're discussing here. So, Well, the problem is, you know, on the sideline, you have a, a pair of white lines on the other side of, you know, the sideline. And those players have to stay behind that first line or else, you know, you can get a penalty for it. And Jacob Wright was yelling at his team to back up so we don't get any unnecessary flags and stop our momentum. Right. It's such a tough rule to enforce. And, yeah. and I mean, I'm, I'm sure it goes unnoticed more than it doesn't. But they might have got him for that. We'll see. We'll see Jacob Wright decide on what he wants to do. Now, that was a big third down pickup if the play stands. I mean, they were backed up the nine-yard line. And that's a flag against the offense. And the good thing is, is it's still going to be first down. So that's the good thing is it does not revert back to third down, which would have really put a halt to this drive. So they lose about 10 yards, but yeah, like you said, they still get a, a fresh set of downs. So first and 10 here, five wide still for Jacob Wright. Nice hitch route, fine. And there we go, Averitt, what a nice pickup there. That's Gerard Mosby. That was a good, strong throw, too, by yeah. the quarterback. I mean, he got that out quick, and it was on the money to his wide receiver. Takes a lot of chemistry, accuracy, and talent to be able to perform a hitch route, and the Cougar is able to pick it up there. You have to be able to fit it into a tight window, and you have to have your timing right with your wide receiver, him and Mosby, showing off their chemistry. Right steps back, launches an out route, and that's M.J. Morton. MJ Martin, nice catch. And they're really opening up here on offense, uh, coming yeah. out, throwing it. We saw that a uh, little bit in the second quarter, but don't want to say they're going away from the run, but they're realizing that this defense is really, really stout against the run, and 
they've got a very capable quarterback. Why not open it up and see what you can get down the field? And they're going to stay in the same five wide set. Jaleel Webster in the game. Look for a motion. And they do motion him across. Ball does go to Jaleel Webster this time. He's got a little bit of space. Big hit there, but not before Webster picks up about six. Well, Webster only 5'5", five, five, but you could see the speed on display there on the outside. Yeah. And we talked about it in the first half. Webster, when he was on the field, he would motion across and not get the ball. Motion across and not get the ball. This time they hand it to him, he picks up six. Right. Yeah, perfect design there. This is a big third down here. You're absolutely right. Third and two, the Cougars with the lead. They kind of need to score here. They don't need to score, you know, but they, it would be nice to get momentum out of the half. Jaleel Webster motioned over. Speed option with Webster, and Wright's going to pick up the first down. That's a first down for the Cougars. Might have thought they got a unnecessary roughness there. Yeah, that was a good play there by Wright of, of keeping it. Looks like he had the option there, elected just to keep it and then get down on the turf fast as possible after you pick up that first down. And that's good field awareness by Jacob Wright. You have to – that's knowing where the sticks are. Right. Getting past the sticks and getting down. Don't take unnecessary hits. Make the smart play. So, again, keeps the chains moving here. Another nice drive here. And it keeps the clock running. I mean, we've got five minutes left here in the third quarter. Jaleel Webster again getting the ball. Got a little bit more space this time. And he picks up about five. I'll tell you what, we, we talked about halftime adjustments, right, which team was going to come out with, with, some, with some different looks. And i tell you what, Averett's done a nice job, I think. You mentioned yeah. that play that they faked. Now we've seen it twice. They've thrown the ball a little bit more. But um, they must have saw something from that first half to, to come out here and then pass a little bit more often. And it's worked thus far. The cheerleaders having a, having a good time flipping all up and down the field. Jacob Wright, five wide again. Tap Scott in the game this time. They're going to motion him across, and they're going to fake it to him. And they got Wright with some space. They had Wright had some blockers out in front of him, and Wright picks up another first down. He had a little extra burst on that one, it yeah. seemed like, too. I mean, he really hit that hole. Uh, that was a nice run, nice pickup. The quarterback, a couple designed runs the last few plays, keeping the chains moving. From both teams. First mm -hmm. drive coming out of the, out of the second half. Um, both teams really running with their quarterback kind of heavy. We saw it about three times from Randolph Macon on that first drive, and Jacob Wright's carried it about two or three times here on this drive as well. Yeah, both uh, both quarterbacks. Yeah, Estes has looked pretty good in the run game too. Just so been overshadowed around. a little bit by maybe Trey Frederick, but most yeah. people are. <laughs> right. Five wide set again. Motion over Josh Tapscott. Play action. Wright drops back. He finds – that is Gerard Mosby down the field. Jacob Wright let it loose for about 35 yards there. Another big play and another big catch by Mosby. And he was streaking, had probably about two, three steps, and then Wright put that ball right where he needed to on the numbers. And that's what happens when you lull a team to sleep with, with a quarterback power, a, a, a dart route, a, a drag route, an out route, a hitch route. You lull them to sleep, then you hit them big over the top. And that's, that's really it. what happened here. Tap Scott in the backfield. About two yards away from Paydirt. Three Josh receivers gets a to the right. Here. Speed option. Jacob Wright takes a big hit there, but the ball comes out. Randolph Macon believes they have it. Let's see what the ruling is. And it's going to be second down for the Cougars. Oof, that was a scare. That was a scare. That was a scare there. I mean, yeah, just uh, that could have been a huge turn of events. But I'll tell you what, this Cougar defense would have probably taken on the challenge with Estes would have been on the two-yard line. They probably would have, you know, Ledbetter would have, you know, been salivating at the lips right. trying to get back there to him. Right. Ledbetter already four sacks on the season. In just two games. He's I a mean, stud. Absolute <laughs> stud. Jacob Wright hands it off to Tapscott. Tapscott. Touchdown and – Great effort. This is going to come back. There's going to be a holding holding penalty on, um, I forget who the receiver is on this far side, but the cornerback kind of threw his hands up in a smart play 
Um, Because whenever a defender throws their hands up and jumps away from you, your first instinct is going to be to grab them. But that's going to be a holding call against the offense. As far as I know, we don't have the official ruling yet. Yeah. Holding on the offense. So that's going to make the second down play a little bit more difficult. Now do they go back to the pass? That's the question. It's going to be second and 11 now. Dante uh, Lampright had a big second quarter. Three catches on that drive. Mm -hmm. He'd be someone to watch here on this second down play. And Chase Nixon is a sneaky guy. He's able to get up and down the field and find the openings. And they've got Chase Nixon, Deontay Lambright, and Isaiah Grice all to one side with Tap Scott split out way wide. Jacob Wright drops back. He's going to run it. Shakes past a linebacker, and he takes it out of bounds. Well, they got some of those yards back, so that's good. Makes it third and manageable now. Yeah. A couple different plays you can go to, you know, from third and five rather than third and 11. Pretty good design, too. They had everything on the left side that time, including Tapscott, who went out right. wide, and then they tried to run back to the opposite side, the weak side of the field. I believe this is going to be a timeout call. To timeout call, third and six. The Cougars are just about six yards away from the end zone. Score still sits 20-9, 243 left in the third quarter. So here we go now, third and six from the six-yard line. So it really means third and goal. All right, if you had to play your Tony Romo role right now, what's coming? My Tony Romo role? <laughs> they're going to they're gonna fake it to tap Scott, look for a pass, and Wright's going to keep it around the right end. Okay. That's what I think is going to happen. Well, he put his foot in the ground, turns left, and he's wow. wide open. Wow. Touchdown, Jacob Wright. I mean, you talk about <laughs> getting a shake from your shoes right there. Jacob Wright. That wow. made my knees wobble a little bit. I don't know <laughs> if I have the brakes left in me to make that kind of stop on a dime. I mean, he was going full speed on a on a naked boot to the right. And, I mean, just stopped on a dime and turned around and waltzed into the end zone. What a beautiful play design, too. Wide open. That's a big touchdown there. That really opens things up now. See if the PAT goes through. Up and good. Cougars lead it 27 to 9. So, Zach, I, if we isolate the variables here, right, okay? The Cougars are 0 8 against Randolph Macon. This is the first time that you are ever in attendance to an Avery versus Randolph Macon game, and we're up 27 to 9 here. I, I think you might be the X Factor. I don't want that pressure. I don't want that pressure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say it's more about the program and more okay. about the kids turning this thing around. I mean, eight and two a season ago, right? right? And they heard that. They knew that. But it's very different when you come into a new season and their expectations. Right. Now everybody expects you to be great, expects right. you to be good, right? So now you carry that, you know, a little differently, and you hope that you can handle it. And I think so far through two weeks, and this game isn't over yet, you know, but it's looking like Averett is uh, well on their way to going 2-0. and And the Cougars' offensive line have done a good job of keeping Jacob Wright upright. He's not really got sacked. He's been able to stay in the pocket. He runs when he wants to. He 
does his own thing. He's only been sacked once all game. That's or a good at point. Least in the first half. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, they've opened it up more, and they've really done a nice job with pass protection. Talking about that offensive line. And here's Randolph making, not kneeling anymore. They need some points, and the Cougars able to wrap them up and bring them down. Well, this defense coming back out, and uh, you know, you start to wonder. Randolph making a team. They like to kind of grind their way down the field, but now the clock is not in their favor. Will they try to be a little different and air it out more? Yeah, they've got 17 minutes and 32 seconds here to, to overcome what is almost a 20-point lead. They've really, they have to. They don't have any choice, but they have to pass it more. And you see it right here, an empty set here for Estes. Yeah, it's a great offense, but they're not an offense that is designed to play from behind. Well, they're going to have to pass and play behind his arm here. But Estes, I mean, was rushed on the smoke screen. Showalter does a good job of tracking down Owens and bringing him down. Yeah, that's a good play design. You, you talk about opening it up a little bit, but that's a high percentage look. You just get the ball out real quick. We've seen that a few times now. And the problem is most of Randolph Macon's passes have been swings and quick screens, but – but down 18, you're going to have to throw it down the field. You're going to have to get some of those 10-plus yard throws. You're not going to be able to screen your way to victory here. I agree. you got to take a shot. Ball goes to Trey Frederick. They're not going to back away from their success story here. Yeah, Lofton was in there again, of course. A couple other big bodies up front. At this point, though, the Cougars would be more than happy to let Frederick run the ball the rest of the game, though. I mean, up 18, that makes it a little bit more comfortable. That's a three-possession game. Right. And right. like we said, we've got just under 17 minutes to go in the entire game. You don't, They don't have the possessions to just sit here and run the ball. Trips to the near side of the screen. Play action screen. And that's Joey Hunt, the sophomore receiver. Yeah, Hunt getting the start today. I believe that's his first catch. You know, we should say, we, we really didn't mention this at the top, but Randolph-Macon, they had to do some adjustments with their offensive line. They've got a, you know, a backup left guard playing center. We're talking about Lofton winning those one-on-one -on -one battles so many times. There could be something to be said for that. Somebody's, uh, you know, playing a little bit out of position. Yeah, and that offensive line chemistry, I mean, you got to communicate when people are moving around. you got blisters coming, so that really does affect play action here for Estes. He's looking downfield. He launches it to a man wide open. And almost finding the end zone, that's Mike Event, who had one catch in that first half. He had a catch for about eight yards, and there he goes there for about 30 plus. Well, event was wide open. I mean, that was a really nice play design off the play action. And um, I'll tell you what, better throw, maybe hitting him in stride, could have been a touchdown. Yeah. Could have been. And I think Estes might have been a little surprised that <laughs> event was so wide open right. there and kind of double took for a second and then found it. But it but still got there. Still nevertheless, big play. inside the red zone is the Yellow Jackets with about 20 seconds ticking off the clock here. Back to Frederick. Frederick moves them down inside the 10. Just seems to get three, four yards when nothing's there. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that like every great back, though? You yeah. look up and you're like, there was nothing there, but it's second and six. Yeah. He just has that knack for. The great, the great, and Trey Frederick is really good at falling forward. Mm -hmm. The good run, the great running backs, that's what separates a good running back from a great running back. Right. The ability to fall forward, even when you're hit from the front, the ability to be able to fall forward and gain that extra two yards. Right, right. Yeah, we've seen it time and time. You're right, too. And it's, you know, it, th that's the thing that always has impressed me is can you can you make it second and six when most backs it's second and ten, right? Yeah. Can Because sometimes you got to do it by yourself. I mean, you need an offensive line, but, you know, he's a guy that can get three or four all by himself. And so as we enter the fourth quarter, your Avery University Cougars lead it 27-10 to 10 with one more 15 minutes left on the clock. What do you think? Can the Cougars do it? I think it's looking pretty good here. I mean, yeah, you got to watch uh, uh, Randolph Macon's going into score here and gets a little tighter. But I think offensively, that's where Avery can win the football game. A couple nice drives, a couple first downs, rather, 
um, get a nice drive going when they get the football back and maybe steal this game early. And Randolph Mankin is, I mean, they just don't have a, an option at this point. They, they're going to have to throw the ball. Yeah. Like they just don't have an option but to throw the ball here. They're going to have to, you know, take the ball out of the hands of Trey Frederick at this point and throw the football. But here they come under center in a, in a weak formation. They got the I formation staggered to the left. That's you know, traditionally called the weak formation, not necessarily a passing formation, but we'll see what happens as they motion a receiver inside. Play action, busted play. They try to find, oh, man, and that's a touchdown Randolph making, excuse me. And they find number four, Jordan Foster for Randolph making normally a wide receiver, the senior, 5'7", 209, wide receiver lined up at running back and Caught the quick out route. Yeah, another quick hitter and another success story when it comes to it. And that's a big score. And they went down pretty fast, too. That's exactly what they needed to do to stay in this ball game. They needed that. And they, they need this extra point. They need, you know, Brooker to, you know, get into a groove and make some extra points because that's that's really hurting them, too, missing those extra points. Yeah, it's one point, but it adds up over time. Yeah, we mentioned a couple times he's a backup kicker. He, he was okay last week. He was two for two. But he's had his issues here today. That one's good. So back to an 11-point game, and the Cougars cannot cannot get a big head and cannot you know start making mistakes this late in the ball game. They haven't started to. I don't want to make it seem like they have, but they just can't let mistakes creep in. Well, the offense can't sit there and, and forget what they've done this whole game. I mean, just go out there, continue to pick up first downs, move the move the chains, and really. With this kind of lead at 11, if you pick up three first downs and punt, it's it's not a you know it's not a terrible thing. Still a two possession game. And for Randolph Macon, I mean, ideally you you need a turnover. All right. Ideally you need an interception, you need a fumble, you need a a mistake to happen in your favor. Right. And the Cougars have been you know really good with the football today. We saw the one fumble when, and but they ended up recovering it. But uh, other than that have not given the ball over to the Yellow Jackets. However, I don't think they're going to, you know, test out Mr. Tapscott back <laughs> there. I don't think that's in the game plan anytime Right, soon. this is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. And they actually do booty deep, but to Jaleel Webster, who does have some speed on him, so watch out. Looking for room to work. He was still on his feet, but got finally knocked over. Jaleel Webster does have wheels on him, as we saw earlier in the first quarter. He almost caught that wheel route against the uh, cornerback there. But if he can find some space, I mean, the, the kid can fly. I can see it. I, mean, I know exactly what you're talking about now, seeing him a couple times um, on that jet sweep, I think you'd call it. Or, yep. um, and we also saw him catch a screen earlier. But, yeah, he's definitely a guy. He's a playmaker. You want to get him the ball in space? And so Jacob Wright in the backfield by himself, five wide again. Empty set for the Cougars. You think this is a quarterback run? I doubt it. I hope not. Ball goes to Jaleel Webster. Yeah, this late in the ball game, there's no reason to let Jacob Wright take designed quarterback runs unless you desperately need to, um, unless it's like a scamper where he has to get out of the way. There's no need for him to take designed runs, but – there's also a reason I'm not a head coach of a football team, too, so who knows what could happen. Hey, we can uh, we could try to predict things. We might not be Tony <laughs> Romo. but Right. <laughs> but so we've seen see. a lot of Webster here. Uh, they've yeah. really, you know, I don't want to say gone away from Tap Scott, but we've seen a lot more Webster yeah. here in this second half. And here we go. Tap Scott lined up in Webster's role here in the slot. Design quarterback run like you called it. Oh, and Jacob Wright actually has some room. Jacob Wright's going to take this to the end zone because nobody's going to catch him. Jacob Wright's too fast to catch. But I hate to tell you, this this is coming all the way back. There was a holding. Yeah, there was a holding. And sorry, Mr. Wright, but I mean, I mean that, uh, that would have been huge. An impressive run. and It's definitely coming back. And you can hear these Afrit fans <laughs> showing their gratitude to the referees. Doing exactly what they are supposed to, right? <laughs> Disagreeing with that call. That was, a, that was a big time play by Jacob right there. A design quarterback run right when you right when you mentioned it. 
and it really got him loose, and Jacob Wright showing off. He's got wheels. He does. I really didn't notice it until that third quarter where I saw him a couple times on the near yeah. side and, and realized just how fast he was. And he was out running safeties with angles there. Right, <laughs> right. That's going to back the Cougars up. That's going to make it second and about 15 now. Well, here's the thing. You can't panic, though, right? Yeah. Don't, don't panic in this situation. Again, I, I still think running the clock isn't a bad thing here. And the only problem with that is Tab Scott's not been able to get his feet up under him. Not not his fault, right. but a testament to how good the defense of Randolph-Macon is. Um, so the Cougars have kind of been forced to pass, but nevertheless, you know, you're right. They've got to take some of this clock away. And the referees, I mean, I don't know if they're discussing the spot of the football or – I think that may be what they're discussing is all of the referees meet to the middle of the field, a meeting of the minds here. <laughs> well, going back to school is not just for kids. Averett has affordable online degree programs designed for working adults who want to pursue an associate's, bachelor's, or master's degree. Visit gps.averett.edu for more information. And... I think they were discussing the spot of the football, but decided that what the heck, this one's right. I don't think anybody's complaining here. So here we go, second and 18 officially for this Cougar offense. Ball goes to Webster. Webster got behind his shoulder pads and picked up maybe about two yards. So they kept it on the ground. Now third down. Now do you open it up? I, I think they're going to – my guess, I would have to see what formation they come out in. Nigel is in the game. He comes out and plays for Jaleel Webster. You know, there's always that balance between running the clock, like playing to win and then playing not to lose, right? Like right. you got to have that delicate balance. But And, Zach, I think they're going to – they might try and pick up maybe six or seven yards. If they get a first down, ideal. Mm -hmm. But they might pick up six or seven yards to give Cole Westbury some room to punt the ball. Jacob Wright looking for some room to run. Wright. Looked like he motioned for Deontay Lambright to go down the field. But Lambright, I think, was saying he was held up. Mm -hmm. So that will bring on Westbury and the punt team. Still a way better decision to throw it out of bounds and over there than throw it into traffic. Right. Don't try to fit it into a tight window and then make a mistake. And just punt the football. Go play defense. And if you're Randolph making, this is the break, the, the break you needed. Mm -hmm. A punt with about 13, about 13 minutes on the clock. If they can get a touchdown here, they would be down by just four, and that changes the landscape of the football game. 100. percent And they're going to get good field position probably out of this as well. Westbury puts his whole leg into it. Almost making something happen was Anthony Williams there was moving all around the field, trying to find a hole, and almost did, but the Cougar punt team staying disciplined and able to bring him down. Williams, another really good athlete, cornerback and punt returner, kick returner. Well, what do they come out and do here? Do they come out and just go right to Frederick? Well, I think now you have the flexibility to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, you're around midfield with about 13 minutes. You've got two timeouts. I still think you need to go, you know, 70-30 pass, and they do here. Estes play action. Pass is caught. What a catch there. Mount of sophomore Joey Hunt. Yeah, Joey Hunt's had two nice catches here in the latter parts of this half. One late in the third quarter and another big one there to move the sticks. And that's, that's going to be big for the confidence of Estes. If, if you've ever played the quarterback position, it's, it's about 80% skill mm -hmm. and 20% confidence. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the confidence. You don't have the confidence, it negates the skill. But if you have the confidence, it makes you a better quarterback. Plays like that will make Estes more confident. And here he goes trying to take off, but this Cougar defense in his face. And that's just Joseph Ledbetter again on the sack. Yeah, Ledbetter again. And Got some help that time. I mean, really just pushed his offensive lineman down past Estes and 
took Estes down on the way. Yeah, Tristan <laughs> Quick got in there at the end. Kind of took Estes to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big play, too. It lose yeah. about three, four yards and sets up a second and long. Second and 13 here, Randolph making. They have to pass the ball here. Cannot keep toting it with Frederick. As he's dropping back, looking, and guess who? Joseph Ledbetter. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. Five sacks now already on the season. He's everywhere. I mean, you can't block him with one guy. You can't block him with two guys. They've been double teaming him now off and on since the second quarter. doesn't matter. And I think what's going unnoticed here is Malik Pulliam is in the game, and he's, he's about 285. Yeah. So you cannot put just a backup center on Malik Pulliam or he's just going to bulldoze right through him. Right. So the – Having to double up on Malik Pulliam free, really creates a mismatch for Joseph Ledbetter because him one-on-one -on -one against any defensive three lineman, it's almost a mismatch. <laughs> yep, 100%. So here we go. Third and 18 for this Cougar defense. A big play here if you're on for either team. Play action. Estes drops back. Looks way down the field. He has a man. Call, oh, and it's dropped. That's a great play there by Terrell England. Well, Terrell England had that 99-yard interception return, but that might even have been a bigger play, I mean, considering the moment. And Terrell England having fun. Him and Joseph Ledbetter, the two big playmakers of this defense down there having fun. And that would have been huge for Randolph Macon because Estes had his man. Oh, yeah. But England had. able to play catch up and get his hands back on the ball. Big time here. Now Everett will get it back. Terrell England proven he's one of the best DBs in the conference. A little pooch punt here. See where they mark it. Ball will be marked at the 15-yard line. And let's take a quick break here. Your Cougars lead it 27-16. What makes Avery special to me is the family oriented and diverse background and communities. Here at Avery, we believe in one family, one team philosophy. As an RA, being able to guide people in the right direction and building a community helps me develop leadership. Also, and here we go, Jacob Wright, five wide again, the lone man in the backfield, 10-23 left on the clock. Jacob Wright, design quarterback run, and oh my goodness, Oh, my goodness, he made 17. Brian Sullivan, a senior linebacker, miss. I mean, a double move really inside the hole. It's almost like he's getting faster as the game goes on. At yeah. least that's the way it feels like. And this defense is starting to get worn down, I think. And Jacob Wright has some of the best knees in the conference. The ability to stop on a dime and get right back to full speed is impeccable. And when you're talking about him, he's a you know, pretty big kid, six foot 200. Yeah. Still that agile. Tap Scott in the game. He's he's unmarked really. Five wide. Motion across. Tap Scott was kind of late. Wright has to keep it. So he goes down. Wright's gonna have. Oh, I thought his helmet came off. But again, that little juke move probably got him an extra three, four yards. Yeah. And made that a positive play instead of a negative one. So here we go now. Second and eight. I think this is exactly what you want to do if you're the Cougars. If you can keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving, just pick up a couple first downs here or there. Some press coverage on the other side here for Randolph-Macon. Tap Scott moves over, second and eight. Jacob Wright, another design quarterback run. Ooh, a big hit there from behind. So Tapscott, you know, hasn't had a ton of success, but you've seen the quarterback run quite a bit. So they're finding other ways. And, and the important thing is the time is ticking. Mm -hmm. When, when this, the drive started, there was about 10 minutes left. They've moved about two and a half minutes off the clock, which is it's big in football time. Right. And this is reminiscent of a couple of those yellow jacket drives, those slow, methodical, you know, chunk yardage drives where you just get four, five, six that's great for time of possession and great for this situation that Averett's in. Nigel Farmer in the game. He gets the ball. 
Farmer more of a third down back, 5'5", 205. Yeah, you can see it. I mean, he's well put together. Yes, sir. Low to the ground and not easy to bring down. Yeah, if you need a yard, I'm, I think I'm going to hand it off to <laughs> number four. And so we're going to take a break here. 8.01 left in this game. Your Cougars lead at 27-16. Can they finish the game on top? We'll see on the other side of this break. So they were measuring the sticks there to see if the Cougars picked up that first down, and they did not. It's fourth and about three and four-eighths inches. <laughs> I still like this decision, though. I mean, up uh, up 11, you've got a really good punter yeah. as well. The, the chance here to pin him deep, Cole Westbury, and put him in a really bad situation. Former All-American punter. Nice punt there from Westbury. That looks great. And that's Williams calling a fair catch. So Randolph Macon still time on the clock to make a comeback. Seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. But like you said, they're going to have to open it up. And they, they did that last drive, and it almost worked out. And I think they're going to need more of that this drive. They need a big play. I mean, yeah. they, they, need a, they need a quick hitter. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a long pass, but it's got to be a big play. They need to, you know, grab some, uh, grab some yardage in one to two, three plays quickly. And here we go, Frederick in the backfield with Estes, two receivers to either side, traditional spread formation. Estes, no drop back, quick slant, and oh my goodness, Nick Mintz in there laying the boomstick, as he likes to call it. I'll tell you what, Mintz has quietly had a really, really nice ball game. Nick Mintz giving out free tattoos all over the field. Although that wasn't a very quiet hit. <laughs> And we're going to have to take a break as there is a player down. We'll be right back after this. Hopefully everything's okay. Injured player able to walk off under his own two feet. We love to see that no matter what team, no matter what colors you wear. We love to see players able to get up and be healthy. Estes goes way down the field and oh. just over the hands of Owens. He had him. And you can hear the coaches next to us stomping yeah. their feet because they knew they had one there too. And, I mean, honestly, Randolph Macon has had about 
three wide open men down the field that have been missed. They had one in the end zone over here with the running back and then two in back-to-back -back drives now. That was Trey Owens again who's made a couple nice you know catches here in the second half. He had about five, six yards yeah. to work with. Just couldn't connect. Here we go. Traditional spread again. Screen this time. And oh my goodness, Randolph making on the run. And Romello Herbin running them down. That's the D-lineman. But Randolph Macon looks like they might just get in the end zone, and they do. And Zach, it's exactly what Randolph Macon needed. Yeah, not sure if that was Frederick. I didn't catch the number. but That's Jordan Foster, the wide receiver, scored on the last drive. Jordan Foster. Jordan Foster in again, able to punch it in from a mile away. Yeah, there was one tackle that should have been had, yes. and that was it. And that, he had just one, one uh, broken tackle, and there you see the result. Right down the sideline, but Foster, some great speed, too. Romello Herbin is fast, isn't he? Yeah. Romello Herbin was keeping up with him down the sideline, but just like that, Zach, if, if they can punch this in, it's a four-point game, and that, actually they're going to go for two. Yeah, that'll make it a three-point game if they were to get this. Because Andrew Isle in the game here with Trey Frederick motion over. Look for a quarterback run, maybe. And they were going to run a jet sweep. But I think there was a... Maybe a there's timeout. A flag, there's a flag on the play. There's a timeout called, but a, a flag on the play. So we're going to have to see which one. Oh, they ruled off. They, they waved off the flag because of okay. the timeout. I think there might have been too many field, too many men on the field as Avery had to burn a timeout there. 650. Let's see what Randolph Macon can do here, trying to make it just a three point game. Well, we mentioned, I mean, they had to score quick, right? And right. that's exactly what they did. Went right down the field. And, and honestly, that if you're looking at a concept you know, scheme here that wasn't the best defensive formation to run that smoke screen against. You had a corner against each receiver, mm -hmm. and normally you, you want to run that screen when there's a man off so you can pin the inside man and, you know, get about right. eight yards. But, I mean, able to make something work was Randolph making and able to punch it in. But I think the one area that will come back uh, up on film, I'm sure, Later, uh, later on next week is that missed tackle. Yeah, um, and, and I don't want to single anybody out, but that's a play that's got to be had. Yeah, right. You make that play, and it's only an eight-yard gain, like you mentioned. And so here we go, Isle in the backfield. They're this in the same exact formation as it was right before the timeout. They're not motioning in over. Isle quarterback power, and he does not get in. So that's going to make it a five-point game, that's which a big is stop. It's still a one-possession game. Right, but now they need a touchdown rather yeah. than a field goal would tie. So that's yeah. still a big stop. Averitt's going to get the football back, and they've got to piece together a couple first downs here. They've kind of stalled out in the fourth quarter. Yeah. See if they can find something here in this next drive. And they've really got to burn some clock. Mm -hmm. And they cannot give up big hitter plays. You mentioned it right before the last drive. Randolph Macon needs a big play. Right. And that's exactly what they got. Yep. Now they're going to be looking for one on defense. Yeah. They and don't have a turnover today, but I'm sure they'll be punching at the football. This is that time of the, you know, the game where start punching at the football. Make sure you make the tackle first and then and just like that it went from an 18-point game went into the fourth quarter in a blink to a 5-point game. And, and that's a testament to the coaching staff of Randolph Macon. We said it before the halftime. They are not going to come out with the same tactic, the same strategy. They're going to make the necessary adjustments. 100%. They played number six last week, too, coming off a tough loss. You know they're coming here to Danville looking for a win, trying to get back to one and one. They're not going down without a fight. Let's see what they elect to do here. I'm going to try and give it to Webster again. Webster takes it. He's got some space. Try to turn around. And he is swallowed up by the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, big time special teams played there by a host of Yellow Jackets. All right, let's see what this offense is all about here, Eddie, huh? Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to. Jacob Wright's going to have to move this ball down the field and burn some clock while he's at it. This is going to test the game management skills of Jacob Wright. You know what, and I I know it hasn't worked, you know, to this point, but I would really go back to Tapscott. I yeah. would go back to him because he's a leader, right? He's yeah. a guy that can get it done, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they utilize him in this drive. 
Here we go. Five wide set for Jacob Wright to start the drive here. 641 on the clock. Wright. Quick screen out. Wright. And that picks up about two or three. Yeah, I can't see the receiver out there. Might have been Grice, if I'm not mistaken. Or Looks like Chase Nixon, actually. Chase Nixon. Number 88. So a couple yards there. Chase Nixon, a leader off the field, resident assistant, really active on campus. Chase Nixon, one of those guys who's who you want in the classrooms with your freshmen, mm -hmm. who's really going to keep everybody's head on straight. Jacob Wright again, five wide set. This is a set they've run most of the game. Once they figured out that Tap Scott wasn't working, right. five wide has been the set, and Randolph Macon hasn't been able to stop it. Ball goes to Tap Scott. Tap Scott might be able to find some space, but clipped up, chopped down under his ankles there. Picks picked up, up about two or three. Yeah, picked up a few, and now it's going to be right in that third and three, third and four range. Yep. And if you're Randolph Macon, you're, you're itching for a stop right now. Oh, because yeah. This would be huge if you could get a stop right here. But honestly, I think Jacob Wright's going to you know, drop back to try and pass this, but he, he might scamper off. He might roll him out, too. Yeah. Let him have an option to do something with here his legs. Is. Oh, nice Ball play to get to it Tap out. Tapscott, Tapscott. Did he get enough? Picks up three, but it's going to be about fourth and two. That was a good decision there by Wright to dump it off, kind of like a shovel pass almost. Yeah, well, I think it was a speed option, and the outside backer was just there so fast that Wright didn't have a choice. And here comes Westbury and the punt team, and Randolph Macon is excited. The crowd is up, and they're ready to go. And honestly... If I am David Clark, the defensive coordinator here for Averett, I'm getting my defense, I'm getting in their face, and I'm saying, listen, guys, we've got to buckle down. You've we got, cannot make any more mistakes right here. 100%. You could feel the momentum, right, but you've got to keep your composure here on if you're on, on the Averett side here. Because a, a Randolph-making touchdown means that you're losing now and you're not playing with the lead in a risky catch there. Yeah, it was near the <laughs> sideline. But out of bounds at the 35. And so here we go. Let's see what this Averitt defense is up. If they are up to the task, can they play disciplined football? This is where those drills come into play. This is where that extra, those extra reps in the weight room come into play. Can you play past the, the pain almost? Can you play past that extra step more than what's needed? And this is what's going to prove it right here, right now. Estes in the backfield with Frederick. The fans are loud. The crowd is loud. The, the sideline is jumping. And let's see what we can do. 4.34 on the clock. Essie's with Frederick in the backfield. He snaps the ball, and they go right to Frederick, and he gets nothing. He gets all of about two yards. Yeah, dropped after a short pickup there. Good defensive play. And that's great. That's a big win right there. I know it's a small win, but a big victory if you're able. The clock is still running, mm -hmm. and it proves that we can stop Trey Frederick. And we've seen how much different drives have ended when they've been in second and 10, second and 8, versus second and 4, second right. and 5. Here we go. Trips left for Estes. Frederick flanked to the left as well. Tight end right. Corners in the faces of receivers. They go to Frederick. Frederick. Able to find some space, and he picks up a first down. Almost broke one there. Almost that was, broke one. That was close. If he if he gets past uh, the linebacker there, it could be to the house. Yeah. And this is where the hairs on your neck start to stand up, isn't it? I know. <laughs> Under four minutes in a football game, it's a five-point game. If Randolph making scores, they're in the lead. That was a big tackle by Showalter, too, Plus. a moment ago. Here we go. Traditional spread formation here for Randolph making. Esty snaps the ball, and they go right back to Frederick, but a flag was thrown. False start on the offense. Huge if you're an Avery fan. Yep, that'll push him back five. Makes it a little bit more difficult, especially when you're not accustomed to throwing the football. The one wide out you've got to look for is Trey Owens. That's who they've been going to here in the yep. fourth quarter. And honestly... I would also keep my eyes on Jordan Foster. Yeah, and yeah, Jordan Foster. The past two drives, he's the reason that Randolph Macon's in this game You're right, right now. Yep. He's gotten the past two touchdowns for him. Keep your eyes on Jordan Foster. Spread set here. It's first and 15. Design quarterback run with Estes. He's got some space, and he picks up about seven or eight. Yeah, he had more daylight there. Just kind of tripped over his own two shoes there, but still a nice pickup. Got a lot of that yardage back. And it's going to make it about second and six, which is much more manageable than first and 15. 
But again, but hold again, your composure here if you're the Avery defense. But again, if you're Randolph making it keeps the clock running, you right. gotta go down the field. Under three minutes now. Estes having trouble calling audibles here. I don't know if the the crowd noise is getting to him here. Estes goes to Frederick. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. That's a big win if you're an Avery fan. That was a big play. Octavius Rocks came up, made a nice open field tackle. Led the team last week with 11 total tackles. Devin Merritt on the field. Ja'Cory Burley on the field. Romello Herbin on the field. And they are asking for the fan support, and everybody is cheering. And look at the quarterback, Jacob Wright. Third and six. This is the most pivotal play right here of the game. Let's see what Estes has in him. Bobble the snap. And that is a catch. That's number 13, Joey Hunt. And it depends on the spot of the football. I, they're probably – and they're going to wave forward a first down. Yeah, big throw, big catch. I mean, there wasn't a lot of room there. That was pretty good coverage on the outside, but I really good we, throw. I think Coach Adams wanted a wanted a spot. He called a timeout. He definitely wanted the refs to check the spot of the football because, I mean, it was super close. And this is a big play. I mean, that was third down. So, I think he has every right to ask that. So two minutes, and the problem if you're Averitt is if Randolph Macon scores, you're down by two. Considering they hit the extra point, you're down by two points, and you've already under two minutes. So you don't have much time to be fooling around. You don't have much time, and, and Randolph Macon's killing the clock and moving the ball down the field. So you've either got to get a stop right now, or you – Really, that's the only option is you need to stop right now. Yeah, I think I think that's where you got to focus first. I mean, you worry about having to score if you have to. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point, speaking from the Cougars' perspective. This crowd will try to get re-energized now after that stoppage. A tight end and two receivers to the right. So they still gave him the first down, new set of downs here. Joey Hunt to the left, Frederick in the backfield with Estes. It is first and ten. And they do go to Frederick. Frederick moves past the man in the backfield and is able to scamper for about three. I'll tell you what, this drive, they've really showcased some nice balance. They've thrown the ball a little bit. They've mixed in Frederick, and you really can't now focus in on the running back as much, and he's finding a little more room. Hurry up offense for Randolph Macon. Right back to Fre Trey Frederick. And he falls forward for a Yellow Jackets first down. Yeah, pretty methodical drive here. It's going to take one of those big plays, I think, on I, defense. I tell you what, Zach, these offensive coordinators for Randolph Macon have some guts. Mm -hmm. They have some real guts to keep running the ball with this amount of time left, but it's working, so why stop? And they go right back to Trey Frederick. And he falls forward again. And then now when are you going to start utilizing your timeouts? That's the question. And there's right one now. right there. Right now is the answer. <laughs> yeah. With 120 left. <laughs> so a timeout called on the field, Zach. We're going to take a much-needed timeout here yeah, with we them. need one. <laughs> and we'll be back here with just over a minute and Oof. a half to play. 27-22. Can your Cougars hold on the last minute and a half of the game? Come on back with us. Second down, nine yards to go. One minute, 23 seconds on the clock. The Cougars lead it by five. Estes and this Randolph making offense driving down the field. Can the Cougars stop them? Trips right and a tight end right as long uh, as well as Frederick, excuse me. And they go right back to Frederick with a minute, 20. Trey Frederick breaks it free. He's got some space. He's got one man to beat. And Randolph making scores a touchdown with a minute, 14 left. And that's going to put Randolph Macon in front. Well, you just talked about it, Eddie. I mean, they've got a lot of guts to continue running the football, but 
Trey Frederick answers that question as to why they're doing it because he's just that good. Zach, the audacity of us in this broadcast booth to sit here and act like Trey Frederick is not a three-time 1,000-plus yard rusher in his career in at Randolph-Macon is it's absolutely ridiculous. Of course they would lean on Trey Frederick. Why not would they lean on Trey Frederick? And just like that, he's got them back in this ballgame. And this is a guy, he's going to be the leading rusher in the ODAC of all time. He's going to break a, a record that was set back in the mid-80s. And yeah. he might have already got there today. He needed 162 yards coming in to set that record. He's probably there. He was at you know just over 100 yards at halftime. Now here's a, here's a question for you. They, they attempted two last time and didn't get it. Right. But here's more important. They're up by one right now. They attempt two and get it. The Cougars... A field goal would tie it. They would send it to overtime. Right. If they attempt to and don't get it, the Cougars can use their All-American kicker, Cole Westbury, just get inside his range, and they could kick a field goal and win it. Yeah. So, I mean, what do, do you – you well, kind of have to go for two here. I think you do because a two-point lead really does you no good, right? right? I mean, right. It, it's just the same as a one-point lead. So, you right. have to just go for two. If you get it, that's great. Then it's, you know, a, a field goal would tie it. But – uh for Averett's sake, I guess the one good thing is there's still some time left on the clock. At least Frederick did score with 114 remaining. You got some time Randolph, to move down the field. And Randolph making with no timeouts. Averett with just one. They have to save that for right before the field goal if they were to attempt one. Still Estes, a big play here. Frederick not in the backfield. Essie's a sign run. And he gets in. So Randolph making with a three-point lead now. So let's hit the brakes a little bit. Let's breathe. The Cougars don't need a touchdown. Right. A field goal would send it to overtime, and that's okay. A touchdown would be ideal. Just go ahead and end the game. Let's go home. Let's right. go to bed. <laughs> but a, a field goal would be okay because we do have an All-American kicker that we can lean on. 100%. And, and I'm anxious to see what this offense looks like in hurry-up mode. You know, what? Wh who's going to be the go-to guy? Obviously, you're going to have to throw the ball. Wright's going to be a big part of it, but what are these plays going to look like in terms, you know, from a design perspective from this offense? Going to have to move fast, too, like you said, with only one timeout. Interesting here. Josh Tapscott's going to stand right behind you, Little Webster, and they're going to make Randolph Macon decide where they want to kick it and I'll force them to Tapscott. To kick it to Tapscott. It's not a bad idea. Tapscott's probably going to run left or right, depending on where the football goes. Or, or do they kick it up here near near an up man and, and hopefully you know I, keep it out of his hands? I hope I I really hope they do do that because that puts us twenty five yards within range of Cole Westbury. True. So they have to kick this ball deep. They yeah. Necessarily, really don't have a choice. That's a good point. Yeah. But I think they're going to go to Webster here. But Tapscott and Webster switching around back there with some trickery and they're still going to kick it to Webster Webster's got some space though ran into a blocker Webster kind of still on his feet and he's finally taken down at the 25 yard line yeah he had a crease there for a moment but it was closed up pretty quick minute 8 on the clock Zach 3 point game this is what you live for, for a better, <laughs> better game right this is it The crowd pretty restless on the Averett side. On the <laughs> other side, the people who've made that three-hour drive, they've got something to hoot and holler about. Randolph making just north of Richmond in Ashland, Virginia. Five wide set. No surprise here for Jacob Bryant. Right steps back. Launches it. He finds a man over the middle. I believe that's Isaiah Grice. The ball came out. Randolph Macon scoops it up. And it's Randolph Macon football. I tell you what, that was a great first down play. Had, you know, a pickup of 15 to 20 yards. And that was actually Deontay Lambright. Yeah, Lambright's had such a good football game, but makes a big mistake there. And that's a shame. It's really going to overshadow the good moments that he had in that first half. Now, now this Avery defense needs a big stop. Yeah, they need a turnover now. I mean, in, in the biggest way. And you can see Joseph Ledbetter down there trying to get his team into it because, I mean, it's obvious that Randolph Macon's going to come out here and hand the ball to Trey Frederick. It's pretty obvious that's what's going to happen. Will they even come out and, and run a play? 
Actually, they're just going to come out and kneel the ball, it looks like. Yeah, Avery with just one timeout. Pretty shocking. Wow. Wow. What a turn of events, Zach. What a turn of events. I mean, really a tale of two quarters. I mean, that third quarter and fourth quarter, completely different. But a couple big plays and momentum. I mean, that's that's the big thing. Once yeah. you get momentum on your side, there's no looking back. Victory formation for Randolph-Macon. Now, this is a disappointing loss, right? I mean, there, there's, no, there's no other way to put it. It's a disappointing loss, but I think you can glean some good things out of this. I think you can take some positives. I mean, of course you can. This is a preseason top 25 ranked team. Mm -hmm. um, you, I mean, you've had, you had them beat all of the game up until the last minute and a half. Right. And, and really there was some big chunk plays that you can't control that, you know, in the course of a game are just going to happen. Right. Um, and but you, you know that you can hang with one of the nation's best. Yeah. I mean, you, you know that you should have won the game. Right. I mean, and I think you have to take that as a positive. And don't let this define the season. Right. Right. There's another game to be had. There's conference to be had. There's playoffs down the line still. And so this can't be a defining moment. This is take your positives out of this. And, and I think Coach Adams is telling his team here, go out there and play with respect. Right. Don't go out there and be nasty. Don't go right. out there and try and take cheap hits. That's what you don't on want. A, on right. a kneel down. They're going to come out and kneel it. Don't be cheap. Don't be nasty. Go out there. Hang your head high. And don't don't be disrespectful. Go out like men here. 100%. And, and you don't want to hurt your status for next week. Right. But I'll tell you what, you look at it from the other team's uh, perspective here, Randolph Macon, what a comeback. I mean, this is a great way to uh, come back after a loss. You know, they're coming off a tough loss last, last week. Looking towards next week, the Cougars at Ferrum at 1 p.m. And that's September 21st, and they are at Greensboro October 5th, 6 p.m. And they don't play again at home until the second week of October, and that's against LaGrange, and then that's two home games in a row where they have Wesley and right after that. Both teams now will be 1-1 one and one on this young season. And that's going to do it. Randolph Macon wins it by three. 30-27. Randolph Macon, big time comeback. 18 point comeback. Eddie, wasn't the result we wanted, but I'll tell you what, it was fun. Yes, sir. I had a good time. It was great broadcasting with you. It was a great effort put up by this Avery coaching staff, this Avery offense, defense, special teams. And, you know, sometimes it just doesn't swing your way. 100%. And I think, like we talked about a couple different times, there's a lot of positive things here and a lot of teachable moments, right? And I think the coaching staff will get back to work and, uh, you know, hopefully put this one behind the guys, get back to the winning ways next week. Right. And, I mean, at this point, there's nothing you can do about it now. Right. right. There's no What's done is reversing done. time. Right. You've just got to study the film, load it up, and get ready that's for it. next week, and try and go 9-1 this year. That's it. The only and that's thing you can, all you can do. Yeah, all you can control is how you react to this. Right. right? It, it, it's happened. It's over. But how do you respond? And uh, that is within their control. And I think they'll respond in a big way next week, come out and uh, be ready to go. Well, Zach, it's been a good one. I have really enjoyed broadcasting with you. And I hope we have many more broadcasts to come. But it was a tough one today at home. Nevertheless, for everybody in the sports information department, it's been Zach Humphreys and Eddie Glenn Jr. here on the Averitt Sports Network. This has been a production of the Ebert Sports Network.